Welcome in oh, to a was. Friday edition. I wasn't ready. Starting the weekend a little early over there for Lizzie. Uh, just hit this whole button. And Driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Wow, the perp looks good behind the head, it does. boys and girls. Shout out to Kayshawn Butte, the nation's best wide receiver and future LSU Tiger. Current and future LSU <laughs> Tiger. Thanks to our guy, Gordon. As uh, he's going to be back for his junior season, but a new addition to the set. Clapper, don't worry, buddy. You weren't benched. <laughs> Where is just he? Just found a new spot on the field for him. Over you. there, yeah. Just, just, just yeah, tackle yeah, right yeah. tackle. His yeah. versatility has always been a strength of his <laughs> oh. game right there. Duck your head. Look, Bob and Weaver, There he is. There he is. <laughs> yes. There he is. <laughs> Welcome to so a Friday set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was awkward. That <laughs> was super awkward. I love having this remote, dude. Uh, it's just the power. <laughs> We're going to talk to Representative John <laughs> Stefanski here at uh, 7.30 this morning as Stefanski mm. will be telling us about mobile gaming Gutter going roll. live. Got and it locked and loaded, baby. We got ready my, to roll? 8 a.m. I, I got my I got my money in there. That's when it happens, 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. Let's go live. Stefanski's going to join us uh, 7.30 from Washington, D.C. and tell us about what's going to be happening today. Very exciting day in the state of Louisiana as uh, mobile gaming was approved and... Uh, legalized here just before championship weekend in the NFL that features Louisiana's favorite son, Joe Burrow, mm. taking on Tyron Matthew. It's going to be a heck of a matchup at 2 o'clock, getting set up before the uh, the NFC matchup of Los Angeles and uh, San Francisco, the third time they'll meet this season. Remember, Daily, we're brought to you by Metropolitan Health Group. Papa Earl's Spice here, 30% less sodium than the competition. You can pick them up anywhere you shop locally. True Blue Water to hop on. The delivery route, trubluewater.com, trubluewater.com. And our phone lines today, Representative John Stefanski will be here at 7.30. Nathan Velasquez will be here at 8.30 this morning with tons to get to here in between. As uh, Scott Woodward was notifying the public yesterday that they need a little help in upgrading the Maryland Center. Probably puts a little pressure on them when a former All-American sitting courtside and they got rats running around at his feet. Uh, and he gets on a public platform and talks a little bit about it yesterday. So uh, we'll take oops. credit for it. Oops, Why not? Oops. 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 Uh, Let's try send, to help the alma mater. Send your, send your thank you emails to Mikey Matuk, <laughs> Mikey at fm.co, to get your uh, your thoughts in. Bring them uh, on. But look, man, I thought that that was, uh, that was good to see. You know what I mean? Like whether it was the rats, whether it was Matuk's story, or whether it was just uh, tiger droppings eating them alive. Uh, it is time. No, not the rats. <laughs> the facility. Um, it, it's time. I mean, like we, we, we talked about yesterday. I mean, it's time to pay attention to what's happening on the floor by supporting the programs and giving them the facilities to complete uh, to compete off the floor. Uh, and I thought that that was uh, a first step, at least in the public. Uh, you would think behind closed doors or behind. Uh, you know, kind of the meeting process of what's happening with LSU athletics, that they're getting it right. Like, they, they, they know they have to pay attention to this. But Scott Woodward sent an email out yesterday. I don't know if you saw this. He sent an email uh, out uh, really kind of asking ticket holders and supporters of LSU uh, to, uh, to support by donating uh, funds to help upgrade the, the, the Merritt Center. Look, LSU's got the money, too, so they'll be putting in some money here. And I think this is just the beginning of the process of getting this done. So uh, LSU's got a big game tomorrow uh, versus TCU, and they'll be away from the Merritt Center. They'll be over uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area taking on TCU, and Will Wade was here yesterday giving a, uh, a preview to that game. Uh, still uh, yet to see whether or not uh, Xavier Pinson and Darius Days are going to be a, uh, a go here, but I'd imagine – that one of them then will be will, will be available. I said that last game with with both of them still on the shelf, and I think, you know, it's for as well as Eric Gaines played, there were still times in that game where you would like to see Penson out there. Now, what, what really kind of concerns me of of the comeback here is kind of getting their legs underneath them and how long that's really going to take to get them, you know, back in game shape. Yeah, I think more so about Penson. Penson's been out for yeah. three weeks now. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's, it's pushing a month. Um, Days has been there for, you know, he's only been out for a really one full game. I think he'll be all right. Um, plus the way the way he his game plays and the way Pinson's game plays. Pinson's gonna have the ball in his hand. He's gonna have the he's gonna be moving around a little bit more. Um, we need him back. Yeah. I mean, we just need we need guard depth. I know Justice Williams is getting better and he's playing better, 
Um, and and Gaines has been playing really well, but Pinson's the, Pinson's kind of the engine, and he's kind of what makes it go. I think we, we need him back bad, and um, you know, hopefully, if he doesn't, if he's not here on Saturday, he's back when SC, when we get back to SEC play next week. Uh, yeah, like Wade said yesterday, right? Like uh, he wishes they could take this weekend off and just get healthy right. for the second half push of SEC play. Because uh, this is going to be a pretty physical state. basketball game tomorrow morning. I mean, I know the Big 12 and the SEC have kind of looked at each other almost like big brother, little brother in football. But in basketball, the SEC is, is you know, experiencing a lot of success again this season. They'll probably put seven tournament teams in. Big 12 is going to match that. I mean, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're playing as good of basketball. Baylor's been the top team in the country for a couple of weeks this season. Uh, Texas Tech has played really good ball throughout the year. Texas is, you know, with Chris Beard in his first season, is somebody that you can't overlook. Oklahoma's playing good basketball. Kansas and Kentucky match up tomorrow in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. So, I mean, it's going to be a lot of intriguing play tomorrow between these two conferences, and I think once they get to postseason, they'll probably be the two most representative, um, two no most doubt. representative sure. uh, conferences uh, in 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 March. So um, got a little brunch party too. You can get at eleven a.m. Get yeah. some mimosas, That's have right. some breakfast on Saturday. Daniel knew it'll be up about four a.m. <laughs> yeah, I got a, yeah, I got a wedding to go to tonight in New Orleans. We'll be back early in the morning. Like we're gonna be oh, tonight. Nice. You have a wedding? Nice. Yeah, I think okay. we're, I think we're gonna what go. What do you mean back early in the morning? Sounds well, like he's I'm just either, gonna float in that right yeah. now. <laughs> I'm either I'm either I'm either waking yeah. up early to come back, or I'll, honestly, you may be going there and back. I mean, I didn't even stay the night. Oh, oh you're gonna gosh. pull the Jordy? Wow. Yeah, you need that's strong. Yeah, my dog. You got a dog. What a great excuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know a dog sitter. Uh, nah, Noah. 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 Noah does that. He stays at my house every time we're gone. Wow. What do you mean? We joke about this I all the time. Because that was all easy. Easy, easy. We're coming back. We kind of burned your plan. We're coming back. <laughs> we're coming back. We're coming yeah, but we back still got to get back. We're coming back. <laughs> they house it. They Big do bets. it all. Okay. And we do do it all. They water your plants, <laughs> bring wow. in your mail, change your sheets, change your sheets, eat your food. I haven't been to Mikey's. So I, haven't, I haven't explored. Yeah, no, I need, I need to have, I need to have the, the team over. We can have the team over. Yeah, yeah. You get the walk around, and I'll know where to go and where not to. Yeah. Well, no, there's, <laughs> honestly, there's really nothing off limits in my house. Really, wow. clearly oh. mine either. Lloyd yep. knows every code. Except you just don't sleep in my bed. Just don't sleep in my bed. My type of party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mikey, come on. You I'll said every room was it was, was on, dude. Oh, you're coming back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we're gonna talk to Stefanski coming up here in a couple of minutes. Huge day. For Louisiana, I mean, this is going to be a day that really we talk about for a long time, or at least going to be bookmarked in the history of sports gaming within the state. Uh, it's been a hell of a couple of months here with legislation getting approved, uh, getting this thing rolled out, sports book being open. Mikey and I had the opportunity to be over at LaBerge the day they cut the ribbon on the sports book and made it. A couple of the first bets over there, and now this morning. Had to go make a change. That was awesome. <laughs> Quick wheel around. I, I won the one I changed, too. I won the one I, the, the previous one I wanted. Bullshit. Panic. Matt took on the phone with his agent in the parking lot. That was awesome. I gotta go Check back. a rule I for think, me, bro. I think, I think I messed up here. Wait, I got to go back. Check this for me. Are we good? No, dude, go around. Turn, no, you're turn not, around, dude. Turn around. Tear that ticket up. Uh, but this morning, there is going to be, obviously, at 8 a.m. this morning, uh, mobile gaming is going to be approved. And this was an enormous part of this bill. If you heard Stefanski throughout the, the stops that he made uh, in the lead-up to uh, whether it was legislative session or this bill getting approved or how it was going to be written, there was a huge emphasis and a huge push on making sure that the mobile gaming part was going to be legalized because without the mobile uh, component of this bill, you know, it's, it, yes, sports gaming is legal, but you still have to, and I know that this, it's 2022, and I hate to sound like, you know, I mean, it, it's tough to do all these tasks, but when you offer things that are at your, you know, at your disposal and things are very easy and you can just jump on your phone and place a bet, and that's the life you live, really. And that's the life we all live now in today's world. When you're asking and taking something like that away from somebody and asking them to get in their car, drive across town, mm. stand at the window, make the bet, get back in their car, go back to their house, that option is going to become less appealing, especially over the last 100 years when they've just picked up the phone, you know, called... 
a guy. Sammy the Bull, <laughs> our guy, right? Call, call and just pl- place the bet. Sammy and they're the gonna con- they're gonna continue to do that. <laughs> what? That's so random, right? I mean, they're gonna continue well, here, to do that if you don't have the mobile component. Now, if I can just open my phone, download an app, make a bet, I've got my own account. You're feeding me the money, taking the money, whatever you know, transaction is happening. I'm in. I'm in. I mean, it's it's, it's huge for for the state. And the more, the more, the the more popular betting has gotten, like to me, the one of the most popular things about betting is the, is live betting is being able to bet the first quarter, second quarter, first half, third quarter, whatever it is being able to bet like live stuff with, and you can't do that without the app. So the app is going to create a whole different, it's going to allow you to, now you can do it with your, you know, who did you say? Lenny the Bull. Sammy the, Lenny, Bull. Sammy. Sammy the Bull. Sammy the Bull. Sammy the Bull. You can do it with Sammy the Bull, but Sammy. you can't do it. You, you know, if you want you to do it money? legally, you need to be able you to do to it. You have to be at the sports yes, book you have to be able to do it. Literally watching it. Okay, I'm at the sports book. Now go back right. to the kiosk and put it in. Now it just makes it a little bit more convenient, which I'm excited about because I can watch the games on my couch and just I'm excited too, text Lloyd. Hey, Lloyd, let's do first quarter what over. What you thinking? What are you thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Teach me. Oh, we're teaching. We're going to teach. It yeah, and we're going to have gonna have, we're going to have some informational shows built around gambling because of just yeah. I think the explosion and the electric charge that that industry is about to experience. I mean, I've gotten four DMs from oh, gambling yeah, yeah. companies yep. asking, <laughs> yep. "Can you tweet this? Can you promote this? Can you uh, you know, put this out there with like money attached to it?" And I'm just telling everybody yes right now because we're talking to <laughs> all of the them. Field. Absolutely. I mean, full disclosure, the Jordy Collada show, FM Digital Media, is up for sale to gambling networks. But until then, we're sleeping with all of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Getting invited to all the parties. Absolutely. We're going to find out who, who's, who's the life of the party for sure. Um, but I mean, like, you, but, but you can see the demand that they have, right? Or at least uh, the need that they have to get their message out into the public because this is going to be such a, um, it's going to be huge. It's going to be enormous and you're less than an hour away. And I think it was, um, whether it was accidental or whether it was uh, on purpose to roll this thing out the Friday before Joe Burrow plays Mm -hmm. in the AFC championship game in the state of Louisiana is genius. And it should be, flooding numbers all weekend on the Bengals, prop bets, Burrow bets, chase bets, what's going to happen in that KC Cincinnati game at two o'clock to start off championship weekend in the NFL, I thought was a brilliant well, plan. And John, when he was in here last time, he said that they were trying to get it for the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Right. Well, they, well, they expedited you, that process real they, quick. They looked up in the wild card yeah. and said, boys, Burrow might be available during <laughs> yeah. the championship weekend. Yeah. We're gonna put your, put your foot on the gas. Yeah. Get this thing done. We're either you know? going to get swallowed up by Louisiana or we're going to have that's a right. massive weekend in Louisiana because, I mean, that's really the point. They've moved the meter back on this thing a couple of times, right? Like yeah. to, to getting the mobile part seemed damn near impossible it at did. the beginning because they were battling with so many, like, you have to go pick and choose who you have to talk to going between, what, seven parishes that are giving you hell. It's like... I think it's nine. 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 Like, yeah. what, are we, nine. what are we doing with that? Like, We're just... I'm know, curious. You know I'm curious to ask. I know. I know. It's the same people that voted well, against Barry look, Bonds. Don't let them fool you. <laughs> don't the let them people. fool you either because um, I, I think that a lot of them stand on the platform of the Bible Belt and that they yeah. discourage... Oh. That's what it is. No or... They're in bed with the video poker. Well, there you go. Yeah, that video too. poker's gone. Community That's who too. was Why don't really they just put video poker. In the video poker. Video poker was the hey. that was the biggest That's obstacle pretty. for this bill yeah. over the last couple of years. I mean, people were looking at Mississippi, people were looking at surrounding states and saying, "How in the hell can they figure this out?" But Louisiana can't, and it all came back to the big money of video poker. And really and truly, it was John George's. You know what I mean? Like one of the most powerful business, per, 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 you know, <laughs> man, businessman in our state. I mean, he's he owns the Advocate. Uh, he's got a di- distribution service with 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 food. That I mean, if you look around, I mean, his eighteen wheelers are littered on the interstate. I mean, they're everywhere. Um, and he also has a huge portion of the video poker industry. And when he speaks, legislators listen. And over the past couple of years, he has been a huge roadblock for trying to get this bill passed. And look, public uh, momentum and 
the, the, the legislators that are up there now that are a little bit more forward thinking were like, look, this is, you're not going to win this. I mean, forever. You may be able to pull it off like he was three years ago, the next couple of years, but ultimately you're not going to be able to, to, to challenge this bill forever. Um, and ultimately that's where it got. And I, I would expect some of those parishes that are sitting out are still – yeah. You know, yeah. in bed with him, yeah. you know, yeah, sure. and they'll, politically. They'll, they'll figure it out. I, I'm curious to ask, because he was giving us the numbers, right? He said the first month that gambling was legal in Louisiana, they it was like $30 million, mm -hmm. right? And they were projecting the second month to be close to $70 million, right? So I'm curious to see how much it's gone up just that third month and how much it's going to go I up know. with this mobile bet. I, I mean, if, it, if it's at, you have to go to the casino, do this, and it's $70, $80 million right. your second month, like, it's going to be hundreds of millions of dollars a month. I mean, it's going like, to be can that? How can you look at that and say, oh, that's not good for the state of Louisiana? I know. You know what I mean? Like Because it's a moral thing for them. I know, well, but... Get, get your head out your ass. Well, it's I mean, the same thing as marijuana legalization. Right, yeah. but same we thing. got some roads we got to fix. I mean, yeah. Louisiana needs no doubt. some money. Yeah. I mean, no doubt. Yeah. You saw right. LSU was no in, doubt. like... LSU was in the deficit, which never happens. Like, this mm -hmm. couldn't come at a better time for the state. Like, the yeah. moral compass in Louisiana is always a great fallback, right? <laughs> yeah, we've we, we got most, drive through yeah. daiquiri <laughs> shops in nearly <laughs> every parish. We're also the most politically <laughs> corrupt state, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, historically, no historically. Sense. Like, what are I mean, we doing? Did you here? see Edward Edwards' will? Trina, yes. his wife, Trina, came out and said, like, Trina. his 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 will had been signed over to his youngest son, yeah. who's like a 10 year old, but like, she was like, Richie Rich. She was Richie Rich. barring the public from ha ever having the chance to open up the will to see what the assets that he really owned oh my. are. Because, I mean, I mean that's you more know, damning than single no almost. tell him what he owns, man. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the, just the, 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 the political power in, um, you know, what, what, what is negotiated by some of these guys up on Capitol Hill is crazy. Uh, and I thought that reading that was a, was a pretty good testimony to that. But we'll talk to John Stefanski, Representative John Stefanski, coming up here at 730 this morning because, as we said, Edwin Edwards would be very proud today uh, yeah. as our state has uh, legalized mobile gaming. Uh, that's probably what's in the will. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Once they get this gambling, put a future on the Saints, on LSU. And we will talk to uh, Stefanski about just how, how, how impactful this is going to be uh, for, uh, uh, for the state and the impact that it's going to have immediately. I mean, like, this weekend's going to be – Yeah, I can't wait I mean, to see this I, I want to yeah. know. I wanna, actually, I want to know what this weekend's numbers are going to be. Yeah. I wish they – I hope they come out and sell, tell oh, us they all they that. Will. They will. I and mean, they have they to promote will. that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, hey, we had $200 million in bets just in right. one weekend. Right. I, I just want to know the Cincinnati plays alone. Exactly. Yeah. That's why they did it. Like, like we were saying, they had to – they had to see this as a massive opportunity well, if you wanna, to unroll. If this you want to know, if you want to know the Cincinnati, just look at the line now and look at the line uh, where it opened yeah. at ten o'clock this sure. morning. Yeah, because yeah. people, I know people down here are going to be betting mad dash. Absolutely. Yeah, they're going to be going. They're going to be betting the plus seven, whether or not whether or not it's a good bet or not. They're gonna they're gonna bet with Joey B. Yeah. So you're going to be able to see the line move and like because Mikey the, Sharps, yeah, you go grab you like it that? now. Yeah, like grab that? it now before the number falls. Yeah, like the line's going to change. And that just shows you how much money is going to be put on that side of it. Speaking of Joe Burrow, we haven't plugged this in a while. This painting here behind me, Lloyd, zoom in. I can't yeah, really do this one. Hold on. So, uh, Jamar Simeon, our Joe Burrow yeah. painting, it's still for sale on our website. If you go hey. to jordyclaudishow.com and click on news, and there's a link that gives you the story behind the painting, and you can buy your own. And it's I awesome. I love that. Isn't love that. It's it awesome? a great painting. I know. It is a great painting. So He's we a very talented dude, too. very man. talented. So we haven't talked about that in a while, but now that it's front and center on our set, go check it out. There's many different price points. So it's when no, you win all no that betting on money on yeah, Joey if, this if weekend, you're a crazy spend it on person, a painting. You just go no frame. <laughs> you yeah. mean no glass. no glass. No glass. <laughs> no glass. Yeah, we framed it, but no glass. But it looks, it looks better that way. Well, that was an accident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it was a beautiful accident. It was, it was yeah. a beautiful accident. Happy accident. Yeah. It looks great. Uh, all right, looking forward to our conversation with Stefanski coming up here on Sports Gaming. Also this weekend coming up, LSU basketball, as we said, is going to be taking on TCU tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Uh, LSU is also uh, has a huge recruiting weekend set up for football. As a, I don't know if you saw it, LSU football put out another hype video. Uh, and introduced you to some of the new faces up there, like Jacob Flint, who's the strength coach. You see him working uh, each morning. Him. Oh, yeah, I like 
like no, him I get too, that. man. I get, but it's, it seems like there's a pretty good like like a lot of people like him. Good. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't know. You could speak to this. You spend more time with, with the weight coach than yeah, you yeah, do yeah, anybody the most, else. The most, the most. I mean, he's and almost you, like the head coach for half the season. He knows everything that's going on, and yeah. like good, like he's the guy. He's kind of like. Kind of part of the the squad of the guys, like the team, and he's part, kind of part of the but part of the coaching staff. But like, he's got this like kind of wall on both sides. Like he yeah. he get he keeps some secrets from the like the is players. He, is he good cop or bad cop? Good cop. He's both. He he's can good. do. He has to play he, both. He can play both. Right. He has yeah. to play both. You know what I mean? Like he has to have the trust of the players that like they know like hey, I don't have to be like perfect around him, but also like hey if I if I mess up. I can get my See what ass. I did there? Yeah, I, caught, there. I caught myself yeah. at 30, 34 minutes. 726. <laughs> good, um, good quick math there. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, been, been calculating um, the spread. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so that he has to he has to be able to say, okay, now now I gotta get in this guy's ass a little bit. You know what I mean? And so um I didn't that didn't really sound I, right. I was no, waiting didn't. for Katie to say something. Yeah. I, 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 was, like, I was kinda yeah. sad. Just, just, like, just when you start patting yourself on the back over there, my took. That walked right into that trap. But yeah, that I mean he he is like I think he's the middle man, he's got both ways. I kinda wanted to ignore yeah. that. Who's, there's one guy who's the guy Guy's who's the guy who's here. the new guy <laughs> that they got that's Hell like very self promoting? Who's the guy who's like put posted the new profile pic of like him walking on the it was like a it was a it was a pretty like coach? No, it was a coach coach. Ooh. For LSU? Yeah, and I was like, man, this is like Yeesh. Was it Polian? No. Who did you say? Yeah, him. That's who it is. Yeah. That's I'm like, it damn, that's a, that's a, like a that's like a that's like a player recruiting. Like I'm I just got recruited by LSU picture, not like a I'm recruiting you too, LSU. Whatever. Picture. I mean, it's good. Whatever yeah. floats your boat. But yeah. it was like I was like, man, this guy's like real feeling himself right now. Uh, there's definitely a new <laughs> regime at LSU you football. See it? Yeah, pulling it up. Oh, uh, that's uh, Jordan Arsement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the recruiting guy. He right. does well, the uh, he handles the recruiting. Um, well, right, am I right though? Like with that picture, like didn't it? Didn't that vibe, you get that vibe? Like, damn, this guy. He's flexing he's a little feeling bit. Feeling himself yeah. a little bit. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, all right, remember daily. We're brought to you by. Uh, there he is. Oh, with the phone. That's Ari what I mean. Gold. Oh, that's what I mean. guy. That's what Ari like. Gold. That's what I mean. I'm back. So this that's man was. Oh, you yeah. think he's actually on a phone call on that? No way. No, no, chance. Chance. no chance. No shot. Get, no get this one. Take yeah, another one. Right. Get another one. Try that's this awesome. angle. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> Daily, we're brought to you by Edward Jones. Remember our friend over there, Daniel Newman. Daniel Newman at edwardjones.com. Edward Jones helping you with all your financial questions, whatever you may have. If you're looking for uh, fiscal questions on uh, how you can invest, if there's investment opportunities, if you have questions about crypto, you can ask those to Daniel Newman, Daniel. Daniel. Newman hey. at edwardjones.com. <laughs> Remember, we told you if you work in the plant industry, uh, whether it's uh, Dow, BASF, Exxon, you got questions about 401k, uh, Social Security, uh, life after work, uh, in the plant industry, get in touch with Daniel. He's an expert in the field. 225 261 8262. 225 261 8262. Or online, daniel.newman at com for uh, for the best, man. Daniel Newman. Uh, as we are still. Call around 11 uh, tomorrow morning. I'm yeah, sure he'll, he'll be, be here. He'll be there to answer. Uh, yeah. We'll also. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> we'll also be planning a tailgate coming up on uh, on campus, I believe, for the Mississippi State game. Yeah, Uh-oh. no. That's uh, a lot of pressure. For who? Uh, for her. Me. Why? I'm, really, I'm struggling with that game. Why? What do you think? Well, I, I, I don't think anything at all. I mean, you're a Mississippi State fan. What's the problem? I almost well, ran the cowboy. I know I'm a Mississippi oh, State fan, but it? I work uh, here. Almost and, like, almost. Like, so and I like everybody. I like all the players. You can I like, like both teams. Good. Just not when they play each other. I know, but it's a That's struggle. Right. Y'all can understand where I'm coming from. Not here. really. I don't no, really. I think we should like place a wager on it. though. I think we should like place a wager on it. Like well, we build build the year, game up. Like make it massive. You've got your side. I've got. But we've got. We've got our side. We put so we put something down on well, we it. We did this last year, and you didn't follow through on the bet. You're that's okay. I probably won't again this year. Okay. But I mean, we could just put it out. No, there. I'm not yeah. doing it if you're or not going to follow actual through. Money what, down. Was that, what was that? What was that? What was the consequence? It was only for you to ring a damn cowbell, and you wouldn't yeah, even cowbell, do it. Yeah. No, no. You have to ring now. it twice. Jason Ra- Jason Ramazan did it for me. Remember? Oh Ooh, yeah. He lost that Ram bet. I think that was the baseball series, was it? Was that yeah. the baseball yeah. series? Well, that's not me. I wasn't, I wasn't part of the team at you that point. You weren't, I know, but yeah. I think that was for the... It was baseball. That yeah. was pre. It was, yeah. So that's going to be a tough game. Like, I haven't even decided I was gonna if I want to go it, but yet. I, I still got 30 it was minutes. Pre, but you're How could you not go to that game? I mean, because it's hard. Like, it's about. just, I'm torn a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm obviously, like, loyal to Mississippi State, but, you know, I have, like, a connection... 
She's people. becoming an LSU yeah. fan, and her heart is. I've seen it happen so many places. times. Yep. So many I times. I mean, y'all, it's really. a struggle. Seriously, it's hard. It's hard to come to Louisiana and not become an LSU fan. It's just hard. It is. No, it we're wasn't until where it would be impossible. Where it would be impossible. You found your way there, but it wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have been here. I tell you what, I go somewhere else. I ain't. I ain't changing. Ever. 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 You really, say, really, look, you're planting your flag deeper. I hated LSU when I moved here. You know what I mean? Hated. And exactly. <laughs> you know what happened? <laughs> look in at me. And you know what happened? We chipped away. We chipped yeah, away. Yeah, but no yeah. one chipped, chipped away. away until I got. Yeah. It's only been in the past year. And next honestly. thing you know, she's got Hunt. purple and gold Jays on. Yep. Well, I mean, look, I have purple. Um, I'm surprised purple. you didn't buy the Jays that Jay had the other day. The maroon and uh, white. I'm gonna buy those. Are you crazy? Those are fire. Yeah. Fire. Who? Fire. Jared Mitchell. Yeah, uh, he had on a whole he had, maroon he had fit. Maroon. Yeah, he had, he had a tops. fit. I called it out on him. I yeah. called his fit out. Yeah. He was he like, was matching wait, what? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> but still very loyal to LSU. Yes, Jay Mitch. Is. Oh, yeah. oh, no, he just did yeah. it purely yeah. for the fit. That was an Absolutely. accident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he wasn't trying. It had nothing to do with Mississippi State. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little struggle. Um, all right, well, we'll think of a wager. Okay. Sounds like it. Uh, <laughs> all right, Stefanski coming up here in right now. Give me a... Uh, Give me 30 seconds. We'll be right back with uh, Representative John Stefanski. We'll get the latest on mobile gaming as it goes live in 29 minutes in the state of Louisiana. We'll be right back here. I got to go Burrow, huh? I think so. Burrow money line. (laughs) Got to crash. Here's my deal. If you're going to, we talked about this. And I talked about this with some of my other betting friends. If you're going to bet the Bengals and you're going to bet Joe Burrow, you might as well just bet them money line. Not spread. Did you say money line or did you say seven? Okay. My bad. No, no. Yeah. But that's it. Like you. You bet, easy you, over there. You might as well. <laughs> you might as well take the money line and not take the plus. Not take the points. You're not going to feel very good if you know. No. Good teams oh, if they win, lose, great teams cover, yeah. but you it, wouldn't care. You want Joey B to win. You want him to win, exactly. And if y'all, if y'all drop this number down to six and a half, I mean, I Where love Joey it? B. It's at seven right now, but if a bunch of money cash comes in from Louisiana, it's going to drop means. down to six and a half, and then you can get the Chiefs. So and plus teaser. seven, yes, sir. Sound Bengals awake. are getting seven points. So the Bengals are plus seven, which Feeling means it, baby. if the right, Bengals lose by six or less, you win. If they win, if they lose by seven or less, you push. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So that so if they win, if they lose by eight, you lose your bet. If okay. you bet the Bengals. Okay. If you bet the Chiefs minus seven. That means they're favored by seven, which means if they win, they have to win by more than seven for you to win. Seven or more or more than seven? Seven, you push. Okay. But So that's why you always get the seven and a half. You can't score uh, half yeah, point. There's some, there's some magic numbers yeah, there. Six you and should and come half. to the watch party Sunday and bet on the game and go through all Absolutely. the Absolutely. Yeah, we'll go through it. Yeah. Ride, once ride you do it, you'll understand it. Ride okay. the wave. Uh, all right, the wave has crashed for, uh, for the state of Louisiana here on this Friday, January 28th, the day that we will remember in sports gaming history in our state where mobile applications are now legal or not yet now uh, legal about 27 minutes from now they'll be legal as representative john stefanski who has so uh been so kind with his time during uh this bill process to the legalization of it to the passing of the bill and now as the mobile application goes live today he is up in washington dc he's a state representative from district 42 a very talented uh, politician within our state, Re- uh, Representative John Stefanski, joining us here uh, on the Jordy Collada Show. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. Yeah, I was, I was about to cut in, Jordy. Hold on. We got a couple yeah, more minutes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> don't have everybody screaming at me on the. Don't have anybody screaming at me on the uh, on, on Twitter and everything else, man. We got a couple more minutes, but hey, look, a lot. You're right, man. A lot of work. To get to this day and and you know regardless how you feel you know in our state or around the country about gambling this is the wave that's coming and this is what the majority am i you know it is the, the numbers showed it what the majority of louisianians wanted and so uh, I'm, I'm glad we're here man you know it's a, it's a big day uh representative tell us about how how crucial the mobile component to this bill was you, you were stressing it during the information stage and the educating stage of this bill process, but now that it is finally passed and legalized this morning and goes live in about 25 minutes, how crucial was this part of the bill? No, it's, it's big. Look, guys, you know, I came on, what, a couple weeks ago, we talked about about $26, $25 million in debt in uh, November. I just got, last night I talked to the head of the Gaming Control Board. We are up to around $50 million, a little under $50 million in total debt in um december now obviously that's without the mobile so the 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 mobile it's a big deal the mobile component is a huge part of this so let's talk about this all right think about your casual gamer so somebody who is gonna 
going to bet occasionally, maybe not every day. The guy who's going to bet every day and is diehard, he'll go to the casino. He'll find a spot he can go to. But your everyday person who's traveling, either traveling the state or traveling outside the state, it really is, he, he's already doing this. He's already got somebody he's placing bets with. <laughs> so it's the ability to be able to cut into that. It's the ability to have that easy, accessible access um, for the for the constituent, for the person. So it's a huge part of this. The states that don't do mobile, number one, don't see nearly the best. That's just flat out, that's, that's fact. And, and you can say, well, you know, um, I, you know, you can argue there's specific reasons. You can argue that's a good thing or a bad thing. But the reality is if you don't have mobile, if you don't have the ability to bet from your phone or your computer, it just, you're not going to see nearly the amount of bets. So what does that tell you? Does it tell you that people aren't sports betting in Louisiana? No, they're still going to do it, you know? So let's find a way to make it easy, find a way to make it accessible. Um, that's, that's why that component is, is, is such a big part of this. Do you have, and y- y- y'all may not have the numbers, but do y'all have like projections on what you're expecting um, mobile betting and, and this to go live? What, what y'all are expecting the, the revenue to, to bring to Louisiana? Yes, well, let's take, let's let's talk about that, Mikey. So, I mean, like, all right, if we're at if we're close to fifty million dollars with just the just people walking in casinos, all right, I can easily to to me easily you can double that, right? It's a, with the mobile. Now that's in total bet. So revenue, look, the revenue is varied. The revenue is going to be, you know, I think anywhere in that twenty to forty million, a, a, you know, range a year, depending on how big we get with these bets. But as far as total bet, total bets is something I think we can we can calculate a lot easier. And I mean, just like I said, I mean, if we're if we're you know fifty million dollars just for people walking in casinos and placing bets, I mean, just think of the amount of bets that'll be placed uh, once people can do it from their phones. I, I think easily double, but I think uh, I, you know I, I would be much more aggressive in those projections. So, yeah. I mean, you're talking hundreds of millions yep. of dollars of bets. That's exciting. Uh, incredible strategy rolling this thing out the weekend at Burroughs in the AFC Championship game, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man. Uh, no, look, obviously that's that's pretty good timing. You know, we uh, here in Louisiana, we have a vested interest, as I like to say, in yeah. that Bengals team. It might not be it, it might not be a team that that uh, we're gonna we're gonna cry over like the Saints if they would lose. But man, we. We have a strong interest in what happens with that. I picked I picked some games last week for uh, when I was on the radio in New Orleans, and uh, I told people that I said, "Look, man, the the Bengals they just they have a special connection with Louisiana right now. They just do, and and uh, I want to see that team succeed because I want to see those two guys succeed. You know, what I mean, Burrow and Chase those are those are homegrown guys. Uh, what did you look? I had I hadn't been able I've been busy this past week. I hadn't been able to catch the show much, guys. What, what was y'all combo around? The, the chase, uh, the chase comment about Miles. Huh. Oh <laughs> boy! Let me, give me, give me just a snippet about what y'all been talking about about that. <laughs> just when you thought you, the guy couldn't be any dumber, representative. <laughs> he would pull something like he that. goes out and pulls something like that, where you look at maybe the best wide receiver of the last decade in the NFL in his rookie season, and Miles wants him to be a defensive back. I mean, it just gives you an idea <laughs> of what LSU was dealing with in eleven years and watching that dumbass. Uh, hey, walk the sidelines. <laughs> Thank you. Stefan. Thank you. Thank you, Stefanski. That's what I wanted. For, for no, look, I, I, I wanted the Jordy rant. rant. That's what I needed. I needed, <laughs> look, on, a, on an early morning in D.C., I needed a little Jordy rant in my life. So, um, uh, that, that's good, man. No, John, it, 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 it would hurt. Don't you think it would have hurt, though, Jordy? It hurts a little more if that's still your coach. Two oh coaches passed. We're yeah. okay. We, yes. can, we can have that conversation this morning, right? No, I, I always think that I'm past it. And then I hear that he that he wants to make Jamar Chase a defensive back, and I realize I, I just still can't stand the guy. So, Representative, how much do you pay attention to the, to the numbers? I mean, do you do you look at game when you uh, go into a you, you have an opportunity to go to a lot of sporting events? Do you usually know the spread of the games that you're watching? Yeah, look, I, I admittedly, I'll be honest with y'all, I'm not a big gambler. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, I understand it. I had to learn it. You have to learn it if you if you want to carry these kind of bills and and talk about it. So I mean, I, I learned it. I'm just not a big gambler. Look, my motivation, my motivation really is the people of Louisiana. You know, and that might sound cheesy to some people and all that, but it is, man. I mean, when when the re- only reason you get into government and you and you do this stuff is to try to help people. And when you're, if you're trying to help people, you need to listen to them and do what they're telling you that they they really want in this state. And so 
that that's my motivation with this. But yeah, obviously, look, I, I check it. You know, I mean, uh, games I'm very interested in. I look at the lines. I look at the spreads. I have some buddies of mine are huge gamblers. You know, uh, my buddy Aaron Vice, who, who's still <laughs> coaching around Central. You know, yes. Vice is still hang. Vice is uh, moved back to Louisiana Perfect a couple name. years. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's coaching around here, but. But he uh, he loves to gamble. He loves to, to talk to me about different spreads and and how it affects him <laughs> as we're watching the game. You know, uh, and, and he and I went to an LSU basketball game not too long ago, and and we were talking. To, uh, he was he was walking me through play by play how this was going to affect him. And so my point is, I have some I have some very very good friends who are who are heavily vested. And so yeah, it's, it's become a big part of the way I approach sports and the, and the way I, I talk about sports. So yeah, it's it, it's extremely relevant, and uh, but get, you know, but look, it's going on across the the country. Look at New York did it. Yeah. I think about a month ago they they passed it. So all of these other states are passing it. It's it's the wave. It's going to be you know the, from the month. Let's talk about the money part just for a second. Yeah. So uh, of course, look, politicians. You tell them that money's coming in. We spend it faster than that it can get through the door. Sure. You know, and so I mean, we quickly dedicated. You know, I think. 50 30 to 50 percent of, of that revenue where it's going but uh, but again it's going a good it's going to good places it's it's going to early childhood education and things that i think really are great programs that are going to make a difference in the state so i'm watching it from that side as well the reason i'm talking about how many how many bets are placed in the state it's not only an indicator of how much the people of louisiana want this and want to participate in it but it also is an indicator to me about you know, revenue for this state and being responsible and spending that revenue and make sure it goes to a, a place that most people will agree is a, is a good cause. Uh, Representative John Stefanski joining us here as we are about uh, 17 minutes away from being live of mobile gaming in the state the of Louisiana. Countdown. Absolutely. I'll get you out of here. I know you're very busy today. When did you know that this bill was, 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 was going to get through? Because I think this was, be, this has been a process over the last couple of sessions and seasons of, you know, when this was going to happen. I know that there were some counterparts that were, uh, you know, v- very big obstacles to get over as far as legalizing gaming in the state of Louisiana. But from your point of view, somebody who was very instrumental of getting this done, when, when did you realize that you were going to get this deal done? Yeah, yeah. No, um, you know, when I had when I had representatives and senators coming up to me that don't support gambling, they don't they don't agree with it but they would tell me that their constituents and the people in their area wanted it. And so I was, I was having some conversations with people in Louisiana that you could see their mindset was flipping. It was like, Hey, maybe I don't agree that, that people should be able to bet on their phone or should be able to bet legally uh, at all on sports betting. But it's pretty clear my constituents want this. And so let me know if you need my vote. You know, I was having a, I was having a lot of the conversations, you know, let me know if you need, let me know if you need my vote. If you need my vote, let me know. Wow. I'll be there for you. So maybe it's not something that I would normally support, but I, I could be there for you because I think this is the right thing. That's when I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I think, I think we can get there. I think we can get there. And, and look, it was a lot of hard work. Uh, Senator Paige Cortez, uh, who has a, a, a really, uh, really detailed knowledge about everything that that's going on in the in the gaming and betting world he, he's the senate president and uh he, he really kind of grabbed this and told early on had a conversation with me and said let's let's make this happen and so you know this this in, in my opinion if, if you don't have a guy like uh page cortez and 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 you know with i will i will i'm not trying to bump myself up but i mean the guy like me on the house side who's, who's backing him up this never happens and so uh that, that that's a big deal and 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 yeah you know it's it's uh that that's when i thought it was gonna be real though when you had those casual kind of guys who maybe don't support it we're like nah this is something that people want let's go ahead and support it captain america representative john <laughs> Zapansky, the man 15 minutes and 20 seconds away from sports gaming being uh open to mobile applications here in louisiana he is out of district 42 he is overseeing redistricting right now in our state he's up in washington dc a great representative for the state of Louisiana doing really cool things. Thank you for the time this morning. Have a safe trip back home. Absolutely. Look, I expect look all the new sponsorships that are going to flood in, Jordy. I yeah. expect even cooler stuff. <laughs> yes, right. Absolutely. Uh, Just as long as you let me ride shotgun on. on the PJ. You got <laughs> it, man. You go. Thank you, buddy. See you. There he is, John right, Stefanski, go, uh, coming in the, this morning. Uh, a very talented politician in our state. I know if you've listened to this show, uh, you have heard. Of, I expect him to be the attorney general. Uh, next in our state, I, make, I expect him to make a push at the governor's seat and 
people that are very well connected with politics in our state uh, and have been for a long time say if there has ever been somebody that could represent the state of Louisiana in the White House, that Stefanski checks mm. as many boxes <laughs> as, as, as they've ever had. So uh, potentially uh, may, maybe mo one of our most talented uh, politicians. He's honest, man. He'll come on here. He shoots you straight. He tells you just about what's uh, what's going on in the state. And as he said, he looks out for the people. That's his motivation. He's going to be having um, fun up there this weekend in Washington yeah. Mardi Gras. I mean, you can hear it in his Big voice. Time. Washington yeah. Mardi Gras. You can hear it in his voice. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, he, when I was awesome. talking to him last night, he was like, "Look, I'm going to be out tonight. So if I miss your call at eight thirty, <laughs> if I miss your call tonight, if, if I miss your call tomorrow morning, just call me right back." And I'm it's like, "It's going to be a long right. weekend." I had him at like seven twenty six. He's like, "Hello, <laughs> <laughs> let me hear." Hey. Morning. How we doing? It's the, it's like, the oh, teacher okay. class. Right, You're up, huh? You're up. Yeah. Big day. Big day. Uh, so it is, uh, it is a big day and congratulations to him and to the entire, uh, working, uh, people that were getting this done up at the state Capitol, because it's going to be huge, man. I mean, you heard what he said, the influx of money was going to be, as uh, you touched on it a little bit, $30 million in the month of November. That was without any without, promotion. Yeah. Right. I mean, that was like little to, to no promotion behind that. No mobile gaming, obviously available at that time to where they are today here on January 28th going into, you know, AFC, NFC Championship weekend, college basketball really starting to catch their legs. I mean, March is a month away. That's going to be huge as far as gaming goes. So um, good on Louisiana. Not, not usually do we have a chance to pat on the back the politicians of the state of Louisiana for doing something that's forward thinking and it's going to help the state. But I think that this is something that's obviously in our wheelhouse being, you know, primarily about sports, but uh, you know, the after effects of today are going to be tremendous. As Stefanski said, I mean, nearly 50% of the, the earnings that come in, the revenue that comes in off of this is going to go to early childhood education uh, and, and good things around our state. So uh, good on them, man. Uh, all right, 8.30 this morning, we'll talk to Nathan Velasquez here uh, on the Jordy Collada Show, as we always do here on Fridays and get the latest on what's going on over in, uh, in Hollywood. Uh, but daily, we're brought to you by GoFlow IV. Remember, G E A U X Flow IV.com, as you can get in touch with GoFlow IV.com uh, on, uh, online uh, and learn about their services there. They also uh, offer uh, three month, six month, and annual contracts and memberships over there uh, with no contracts. I'm sorry, they offer the, uh, the memberships, no contract. Chronic dehydration, if you suffer from that, chronic illness, hangover cure, illness recovery, athletic performance. Uh, GoFlowIV.com, G-E-A-U-X, FlowIV.com, G-E-A-U-X, FlowIV.com. Go with the flow over with our friends at uh, GoFlow. 7370 Jefferson Highway is where they're located uh, over there, right in the heart of Baton Rouge. Stop in and see them and tell them you heard it here on the Jordy Collada Show. And the um, promo code. They mentioned uh, it. Yes, 15% 15 off. off. Oh, about that. there's the commercial. That was yeah. cute. You know what we need to get? <laughs> Speaking delete. of different promo code, we need to get a promo code for Barstool Sportsbook or something. Yeah. That's we need to get a promo code. Now that yeah. it's legal, now Absolutely. we can do it. We get a promo no, no, code. No, we're we're, yeah. we're talking all of them. That's easy. Um, you know, they don't pay. You don't, I mean, it's easy. You get the, yeah. Then you get into the super boost where you get to make your yep. own bets. Yeah. Yep. I'll tease a couple out there. Uh, yep. But uh, get over to GoFlow and use the promo code Jordy Colada Show and you get 15% off of your initial treatment over there. But you are right. And uh, there are... Uh, we couldn't do it before. We can do it now, though. Cricket's yeah, absolutely. live right now if you want to do any betting. Or that countdown clock's making me so nervous for some reason. I don't know. It's like the doomsday clock. That's for the same thing. It's, it's <laughs> about the same size. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Slice of pie. It's giving me anxiety. Wow. Uh, I am all right, good logged in over here good, on a little application. Good poll <laughs> question. <laughs> uh, good poll question today up on the, uh, on the poll sites. Will you place your first mobile wager today? Uh, make sure you're in with us and uh, legal mobile part. wager. That's right. There you go. First uh, legal. Well, no, legal. I, didn't want, I mean, that would obviously slant it to 100%. <laughs> hit the like and share button, uh, if you don't mind. Hit that like button, share button, and hit that comment button. We had mentioned a little bit uh, about LSU football having an enormous recruiting weekend, uh, and it is going to be huge as they've been doing work over the last couple of days to set up this official visiting weekend, and uh, it's going to be huge. I mean, the who's who. Uh, that's left on the board outside of Trevante Citizen uh, is really going to be here on campus for LSU this weekend. Who's coming? Uh, Harold Perkins will be here, uh, who LSU had an in-home with him yesterday. Uh, you should invite officially. him over to the new 
Uh, Uncle he's got, Al's coming with him. He's got Uncle Al and his mama. The Unks know that they have an open invite. Mm -hmm. uh, Harold knows that he has an he has an early invite. Let's go. We got uh, the True Blue Water there. That a boy took some initiative. You changed it out. Uh -huh. nice. All right. <laughs> uh, five star coach. Five Tony. star. Um, Harold Perkins will be here. Speaking of five stars, uh, Jacoby hey. Matthews will be here, who Another is the one? highest ranked uncommitted prospect in the state of Louisiana. Of course, Matthews is the five star safety out of Ponchatoula. One of the storylines here that I don't know that we're, we, we've talked about a little bit is that Hank Tierney, who was Ponchatoula's coach for the last couple of seasons, and he's a legend as far as high school coaches are concerned in the state of Louisiana. He went back to Shaw right after the season. He used to be the coach at Archbishop Shaw uh, and was, uh, was moved uh, after the season, not moved, he accepted the job back at Shaw to be the head coach over there. So Hank Tierney, who's been a real uh, you know, kind of safety net or at least safe place for, you know, coaches down on Ponchatoula's campus as far as getting to Jacoby Matthews. He's not there anymore. Um, and Have we talked to him before on our show? Hank Tierney? Yeah. I think we talked to him about TJ. Um, we did talk to him. About uh, TJ Finley? About TJ oh, Finley. Because yeah. he coached TJ Finley. Okay. Um, but him not being there, I think helps. I think it helps LSU. In, in the sense of, you know, they've got a really good relationship with the family. Frank Wilson knows the dad. Um, he's done a really good job of reestablishing LSU, you know, kind of how they feel about Jacoby Matthews. And, you know, I mean, they're getting some NIL stuff done for him, which, you know, when you're competing against Texas A&M, that's also the thing that Texas A&M has now done moving forward with how they're going to operate. Like every season, they're going to have these NIL deals in place for these recruits that are going to pay them upwards of $30 million. And for a guy like Jacoby Matthews, who's in you know, LSU's backyard, grew up loving LSU, at one time was committed to the program, and he gets an opportunity to step out and see what's happening around other campuses. And he comes back to, to Baton Rouge and says, hey, man, I just – I don't need what Texas A&M was offering – but I just need something. I need a little love. I mean, if that's going to be an, if that's going to be what's happening out there, and people are going to be offering money for me to come to their school, I really want to go to LSU. But I can't do it with a clear conscience without some type of, of of financial advantage of going to the school. And you know, I mean, LSU has become very relevant in that space in the last two months. I mean, compliments of. You know, like kind of out loud, Gordon McKernan, he's done a lot to really move the meter for LSU on that. But, you know, that's going to be kind of the way of the world in, in college recruiting in these big time, in these big time guys. Well, I mean, you, you saw where they both, Harold Perkins and Jacoby Matthews, you saw their final three, right? They're both the three same schools, Florida, Texas A&M, and LSU. And right. they've obviously have talked about playing together, whether it be the the tweet that you saw them send out with Jamal Adams and Devin White. <laughs> so I think they might be tethered together with the three schools <clears throat> being the same. And you see this in recruiting occasionally. Well, how does that happen, though, from Texas? And we, like, how does that – how do you get that – you usually have a package deal of guys that – Camps? Yeah, grew up together or played with each other in high school or whatever, but, like, they're completely different states, right? Well, like, they'll probably run, like, the same recruiting circuits together. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's like baseball yeah, guess, where you see, yeah. you, know, you see people around at showcases and stuff. You're like, damn, I think – yeah. Are we just best, are we best friends? Yeah. Like, yeah. So I think you're really good. I'm really, really good. good. Let's go be really good get somewhere together. together. Yeah, I yeah. Get it. Like I'm from New Orleans. Like, oh shit, you know yeah. LSU? Yeah. And it's like that's all my final three. But I think because of the NIL that LSU got in that game, I think they both were gonna go to Texas A and M together. Because how like you said, how can you ignore it? Like I'm not mm -hmm. gonna go play somewhere for free. Well it was Denver Harris. Yeah. I mean think about That was the, a real kick in the dick. Think about the conversations <laughs> that we had with Denver Harris's stepdad and what he told you about the feelings that Denver Harris had for LSU. He grew up saying it was his dream school. He brought him to LSU on Saturday nights. He wanted to play at DBU. He wanted all of what comes with being an LSU football player. That's what he wanted his entire life. Up until Jimbo Fisher sat in his living room and said, mm -hmm. here's X amount of dollars to come to Texas A&M to play football for the next three to five years. You yeah. know what? Forget LSU. I'm going to Texas A&M. For one year. His transfer portal. Well, I, I, the, his way, squad together. the way that I've understood that these NIL deals have been put together for Texas A&M is that they're like on three-year contingent oh. deals. Yeah, someone it? emailed us about that and told us. 
that you can't just um, break your contract. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. you, well, 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 you, what? Would, you would have to forfeit money or you have to pay money back depending on how it works. I don't think that Duh. every player has the oh, same. Should be. Yeah, I don't think that really. every player has the, the same contract, but I think that I, I don't think I know that they all are performance based. Oh, so you, it's like an Antonio Brown contract. Or if you get X amount of, is it that? Like if you get X amount of yards, you get this? Or is it performance based on what they a, do it, for the NIL company that they signed with? It's performance yeah. based on the contract as far as the payout goes. And it's also signed not year to year like the scholarship is. It's signed at a minimum three of contract. three year deal and a maximum five year deal. So if you've got these guys, I mean, it's not going to be a mass exodus next year at Texas A&M. You know, like where people are like saying this is going to blow up after after, after a year. It might, but they ain't going to lose as much money. They're not well. They're not going to lose on Texas A&M side, and they're not going to lose these guys. Yeah, it says it's going to be spread out over three to four years, and if they do decide to transfer, they have to pay all the money back to whatever booster they have an NIL deal for with. the year that, for the next years though, not the years they mm-hmm. already got. Right, not the first year. Like you can't just take the money back if you're there for first year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's how that's how the contract should be. The guy still can leave. Go get money somewhere else if they want to play. Oh, then you're going to have schools that are paying, yeah, really right. paying for those other two exactly. years. So other boosters, buyouts, right. buyouts, right. no doubt, buyouts, yeah. player buyouts. That's, I mean, that's that's how, it's, but that's how it should be. You shouldn't yeah. be able to give a player some money, and then him, and him leave and him still have the money. Like it's how that's that's a normal. That makes sense. So some of these guys are going to have to get bought out from whether it be A and M or any NIL school. If LSU wants to get in the game, it's like, look, I have two years left on my deal. Can y'all take right. care of this? And then we'll strike another NIL deal that'll probably a little lesser in like base salary or whatever because of the buyout. Is that where this is going? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's I going. It's going yeah. to professional football. Yeah. I mean, at some point okay. over the next two years, college football teams are going to hire real general managers, not these general manager titles where you're like, "What's the general manager in college football do other than overlook the roster and make sure that they stay on the same." you know, trajectory that they make sure their roster management is okay. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to have real general managers set in place, like looking at payouts and looking at what you're getting in return for paying certain players and looking at performance based money, exchanging hands. Um, And there's going to be players that come. I mean, just think about a natural recruiting class that comes in every year. The average number is 25. You usually hit on what? You usually hit what on a, a class of twenty five, half, maybe, maybe, how do you <laughs> maybe. Mean, yeah. How many can make come in and make an immediate impact? Three, right? Like last season, LSU's class was super talented: Kayshawn Butte, Mason Smith, B.J. Ojolari. Uh, the freshman class two years ago. Oh, okay, okay. Like when, oh, you're saying them playing last year? I got right, you. I got right, you. Right, I got right. you. Um, you know, B.J. Ojolari, Kayshawn Butte, those guys that were making like enormous impacts as freshmen it's very rare you know to find those type of diamonds and as as first year players in college football well, especially where kind of the sec is and the schools that they choose to go to they should have dudes in front of them to where they can't really get on the field like mm-hmm. you saw pat i mean not patrick peterson you saw tyron matthew comment on nil yeah. and what he what he thought about he's like i can't believe people leave like that competition made me who i am today and yeah like, well tyron you played as a freshman Right. But it's like those, for those guys to get on the field that early, you have to be special, special. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, they know that they're good and they're going to want to look to play somewhere else. Yeah. If it takes, you know, especially with what A and did with that class, there's going to be four or five guys that look around and go, I could be playing at LSU. Mm-hmm. I could be playing at Florida. I could be playing at Mississippi State. Like, mm-hmm. just get me on the field because mm-hmm. they've never sat a day in their life. Right. Uh, Stephen Miller was told by a trusted source. That uh, Gordon is covering his assets with fine print in his contracts. Well, Stephen. Of course he uh, is. He's a lawyer, man. I mean, <laughs> he invented do you not contracts. think that the contract <laughs> is going to benefit him at the end of the day? Or it's not gonna con- is that going to protect him? I mean, that would be stupid business if it wasn't. 20. Right? Yeah, he's Here we protected. go. Here we go. Here we go. Put some... Oh, geez, wow, bro, down. you're already dropping the credit card. Oh, my gosh, this is amazing. Uh, let us reset. <laughs> we'll be right back. We're making our mobile gaming. Nine, eight, Let's go. seven, What app are we six, on? I'm on Blockstar Sports. I'm on okay. all of them. Three. Yeah, I'm going on all of them. <laughs> two, one. Let's go. Let's put a bet in. We should have had champagne for this. And we still can. We don't have any. Well, drink it all? Drink it. I mean, out well, the bottle. It sat in the refrigerator for like two weeks open until I poured it out. It's still good. Yeah. Uh, what's the first bet, bro? Who are we taking? 
You got Bengals? Yeah, money line. Well, wait, so you have a Barcelona Sportsbook has a free $1,000 bet. A free $1,000. That's right. Money bet. Wasn't so there you a put code the promo code Bayou, Bayou. Barstool Sportsbook plug. You put it in there, you get a free thousand dollar bet, guaranteed money back. So if you lose the bet, oh. you get your thousand dollars back. Just so of course I put thousand dollars down on Joey B. You just put that in? <laughs> no, I didn't put. But I'm going. With it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Whoa. I guess yeah. it's free money though. It's fun. Yeah, it is. It's, That's what I mean. It it's, it's you get your money back no, no matter, matter what. what. If Joe Burrow throws for one yard, right? And you have to throw for one Well, that's yard. also another, like, there's a, you can go on, there's a bunch of parlays. What is, I mean, bunch, uh, is the LSU-TCU uh, line out yet? Or do they do those the, they out. They New players get 100% risk-free casino wagering up to a maximum of $1,000 in casino bonus cash. That's it, risk-free wow. wagering. Risk-free, and then, so it's all in casino cash, so. That's the Barstool Sports you, app you're you, talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. I got, a lot, I got a little to learn. How do you catch So much that free out? money being given out on these yeah. apps. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable. But it's only money that you can use in the app, right? Yeah, that's you can't okay. cash that ticket. Once you make the money, though, when you win the money, you can't. Uh, so they're spotting you without, they're yeah. spotting you a grand. That goes to show how much money they make off it. Here well, you I go. Mean, Here's some fun money. Well, I mean, get them in. Right. It's it's the gambling technique. I mean, the, 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 the blackjack table, you win every time on the first one. You think right? so? I mean. I don't. I do, man. I mean, think about the stories that you've heard or some of the things that you've experienced. I mean, you're like, this is the first time this person's ever played. The first time I ever played, I remember it, winning. Yeah, and it, is, it is the thing that, like, you walk in with somebody that's never played. But like the first time you make a sports bet. Yeah. You know, I can't like, wait for shit. my first time. It's going to break. You going to tell us all about it? <laughs> it's going to be with Nobody boy. ever forgets their first <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, first show. You should really first make that. You should, you should do it in the car. That's okay. how easy it is. The carpool queen. I just don't know. Then you go about live betting, from carpool so when you're gambling. That's what we do. You yeah. put your bets in from the carpool. I mean, line. I might get super into it. There's no doubt. Especially the first time's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Definitely. Which, yeah. which it usually is. It usually is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> usually sucks you in on the first one. That. That's good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Know. <laughs> Need another find yourself another sometimes. dance partner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good for y'all. That's right. Huh? Yeah. That's true. It's very true. It's, yeah, it's, true. it's the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, we didn't fit. <laughs> we didn't finish the uh, the preview of the uh, the, the recruiting weekend. Uh, as Harold Perkins and Jacoby Matthews are going to be the two biggest fish that are on campus this weekend. Uh, av- uh, obviously, uh, last week uh, LSU had Travante Citizen in. Uh, the staff brought in Danny Lewis on a midweek visit for uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I think he actually delayed his Florida trip uh, by a day because he wanted to stay an extra couple of days uh, in Baton Rouge. Uh, and then Caleb Douglas, who is a wide receiver uh, out of Texas, he, uh, he played quarterback as a junior before moving to wide receiver as a senior. You rarely see that. You usually see yeah. wide receiver to quarterback. Uh, but he made the, 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 the transition from quarterback to wide receiver. Um, and last year had a really big season, catch, uh, catching eight touchdowns and nearly 1,000 yards. Cortez Hankton has been uh, really big in this recruitment, and LSU is obviously pushing for another wide receiver. And Douglas, we in? Seven and a half now. It's going Ooh. the other way? Plus wow. seven and a half for the Bengals. I guess it's not just going to be Louisiana. There's know, a people. little oh. bit of hey. chirping out just there. Lost There's a little bit of chirping out there about Joey B's knee. Oh. You think Joey B's shoot that? Joey B's gonna be going. fine. Joey yeah. B's gonna be fine. I'm just saying there is a little bit of concern out there. Maybe some of the sharks, maybe some of the guys, the guys, oh, maybe look, some of the wise like, guys I'm, out look, in the I'm desert. Not, I'm not betting this because I'm as sure, a smart. You're bet. betting with your heart. I'm betting with my heart with this, no doubt. So the that's other, bad, the other bet plus seven and a half, plus seven. Well, no, it's not bad. It's just that's what Vegas thinks that the line makers mm-hmm. thinks that. The Chiefs are going to win by more than seven and a half. Who are these people that set this? They're, <laughs> they're very, oh, that's, I mean, that's who are they? All these people say it's very, Vegas. Very, yeah. Who? They have a like bunch of people. How many of them? They have algorithms. I mean, they have, they have, <laughs> a, they have a lot of them. It's in the multiverse. Yeah. yeah. Really? A bunch, their BMI is very high, these people that set this. Set I'm going these over. <laughs> Definitely over. I know. You're, you're obsessed out. with the over. If you could pay, if the you Bengals and Chiefs, If you could paint the profile of an odds maker. Just, uh, Where the, would you start? The sports book. All You'd the people the that are gambling. Because... Definitely a cigarette smoker. Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely a fried food eater. Okay. See, I disagree. Oh, really? In the sense of what? 
a dis like a, an odds maker. Like you think he's like a, a athletic in shape. I, I think I think he's a very very smart guy. I think he's a, more of a nerd guy than a, than the, the the old school betting guys. You think? Which one are you more scared of? The it's like it's almost like NFL head coaches. Are you more scared of an Andy yeah. Reid or a Kyle Shanahan? It's like do you Kyle want, Shanahan, right? Do you want the? That's what I think they're making. The football there's, there's, guy. There's a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. You're I probably right. Them, like sitting in a room together doing this. Like, they how don't. They, they they don't know that it's sun shining outside. They don't know if it's sunny or raining. They live in outside. The casino. They live in a casino and they live like in probably like. The most inner part of the casino, what? right, where they are just Grinding. fielding calls, uh, watching games, analyzing numbers, I and mean, they got they making have so calls. Much information that they have to sift through. Yeah, because there's the old school. Have you seen Two for the Money? Uh uh-uh. no. With uh, back for that inch. Who's that? Uh, Al, I think it's Al Pacino. Pacino? Yeah, that's not that's not two uh, inches. That's not two for the money. No, no, be, I know uh, that's that's the that's, uh, 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 any given Sunday. <clears throat> any given, two yeah. for the money has oof. It's not Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, it is. It's Matthew McConaughey. It is. And he's um, it is. Yeah, he's a gambling guy that comes. That's up from based the off of, of uh, Stu Finer. But the movie gives you a little insight into what like sports gambling is, but it's very over like over dramatized. Mm-hmm. But there's a so documentary. I there's a doc. Yeah, absolutely. Good People, movie. if you if you are a good like line maker. line maker and you make and you win, like people are gonna pay to take a your lot. bets. Yeah. So are people like these people are getting tips? Like they're, people call in and give We're them like so inside there's, information. There's, well, that and then there's like you know there's algorithms that they can't they 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 crunch numbers. They yeah. look at different things and they, they create. Like I have a buddy who creates his own lines and compares them to Vegas, and that's yeah. how he he figures out what he wants to do. Like, he's very, very smart. But when people My say, guy. like, hold on, like, they were saying that at the LSU basketball game the other day, like, with the way the line was, they're like, Vegas knows something. Does that mean, like, some, they, they have did, some kind I of tip I was confused at that. I was confused that at that That was line. one of the most confusing lines that I've seen put out, but LSU won the game by eight. Yeah. Six. Six? Six, I think. Who's but it point? wasn't. The fi- I think it was six points, but the, the, the final line that I saw half. was ten and a half. Just crazy. Even yeah, if they're up to seventeen. Like, Even if they're full health, ten points is a lot I mean, of points. I mean, you had no Xavier Pinson. Yeah. Right. You had no Darius Days. Even if you get them back, they had missed the last couple of games, which means they're going to be a little rusty, right. right? And for LSU to be going through Six. the three-game lo- losing streak that they were in, mm-hmm. coming back home, trying to find themselves, and A&M was two playing of their well. better players. A and M was playing good, and A and M was desperate. They lost two in a row coming into LSU. So they were going to be playing hard and playing desperate, trying to win. Ten and a half points was, I mean, that's a lot of points Mm -hmm. to think LSU was going to win by when they're down. They're trying to kind of find themselves. A late Wednesday night. A&M's coming in motivated and desperate. So that means that these people in Vegas knew something that everyone didn't know. They they either, yeah, I mean, but 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 it was a very, it was a a very, yeah, like they they didn't have, they didn't have the right information, or yeah. they might have not having all the information, mm-hmm. uh, or somebody might have told them that Pinson was coming back, right. or somebody must have said that Days was coming back because they just that that line stunk. Stunk. I mean, it stunk. I mean, it I mean, was, we all hopped on it. It was great. It was great. I, it was the best case. LSU won, and I won my bet. And then they got this <laughs> yeah. jack leg out there trying to hoist up a three for the teaser over, and he was just, like, he almost broke the under. No, the it. teaser. Under. under. That's what I'm saying. If you you should have just bet the over. That, well, always. But I just. I wouldn't, you know, have, bet, I wouldn't have bet the over. But you won the under by a half a point. Yeah, but there's guys at half court jacking up a three, and this is when you'll get into the. Yeah, that's gambling. when it's fun. That's uh-huh. when people like. It makes every game fun because. It's never the, over. The game, yeah, it's never over. Yeah. And that's why. That's why league. Like Roger Goodell and, um, you know, guys that run commissioners of leagues love the gambling component and will never say it but because it keeps people invested in the entire games. Yeah. And you can go to TV advertisers and say, you know, people are staying and watching through the entire four quarters. And a lot of people that are doing that for, in, you know, NFL, NBA, NHL, college football, anything, anything cricket is because they're gambling on it. Yeah. And that's why today is an enormous day for like Scott Woodward. Today is an enormous day for... Uh, Roman Banks at Southern University. Today's a huge day for Gail Benson. Uh, you know I mean, like people that have stakes in college professional athletics in the state of Louisiana is about to see a huge bump 
and interest in their product because people can now so easily gamble on them. Mm. Yep. Right. And yeah. it's, it's different than calling your bookie, right. Where you can just say, Same give symbol. me, give me, give me the Bengals plus the seven and a half. Now, when you open up these sports gaming apps, not only can you get the Bengals plus seven and a half, but you can also bet whether or not Jamar Chase is going to have eight or more catches or mm. whether he's going to go over 120 yards or he's going to catch two touchdowns or Joey B is going to get sacked eight times, whatever. You can fall into this tra- into this black hole Those of prop bets. just yeah. next thing you know, I'm just – I can't get out. That's the one we got money last week. I don't even know Probably. what I, I bet. got. I don't know. What I don't I even bet. know what I bet. <laughs> but I bet everything. <laughs> I got KC and Cincy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Then you start. Then you start hedging, and you, and you can middle. If you want to see something fun, <laughs> go with something fun. Go look at. Go to YouTube, and Google. YouTube like, and Google. I mean Google. Go to YouTube and search. <laughs> um, the like bad beats. What a millennial. Bad beats. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like, and see videos. And that's why people, like, you'll look at the game. Like, they don't care about the game. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, I think of a football game and teams are tossing the ball back to try to have this last little, like, play. And then they fumble and the team, other team recovers it, returns it for a touchdown. It doesn't mean anything for the game because the game was already over Uh with, basically. Well, it screws over everyone in the betting world if they had the over or the under. Okay. Or helps them or hurts them. You know what I mean? So. It's just you see people have these bad beats and it's funny. So like, do you have to give secure you... your bets before a game starts, or can you get? Can yeah. you so bet you, yes, the game? yes. So you have to secure like the lines, but then there's bets live during the game. That you can, can bet. Okay. You can continue. Like if, if the game's not going the way you want it to go in the first half, you can bet. There's like second half bets you okay. can have. Okay. But that's what the app comes in the. Sounds play. fun. Uh, Nathan Velasquez coming up here. Yeah, until you're, you know, spending the weekend by yourself <laughs> trying to cover up on Hawaii. Oh, no, that's the get that game. Also, what's At the a 10 uh, o'clock gems, kickoff? Gems on uh, Netflix. That's like a very, very uh, intense betting movie. Oh, that's okay. what you should watch. Uh, that's what I need to watch. Yes, but there's but, some I mean, shoddy bets out there that they wouldn't let you. You can't bet on the. But tip. the bad beat segment by SVP is one of the greatest yeah, betting greatest. segments that you could ever watch. It'll sure. really kind of break down and show you just how. Sick, the, the, yeah, the, and just the generation of people, just brutal gambling can be. Yeah. Okay, you know what I mean. I mean, I, I mean, you're you could be watch, like you know. I mean, think if you were watching that KC Buffalo game last last week with 13 seconds left in the yeah. game, you think you're winning. I was. I, I, you know I, I bet mean? on Buffalo. Yeah. No, but like, buddy, think if you had bet on it. No, my buddy did. You know, that he had been fun. he had Kansas. He had I mean, he had Buffalo. Josh he, Allen is hugging yeah his teammates on the sideline like fellas. We're going. We're going to the, going to the championship. championship. My buddy texted yeah. me and said, "I'm undefeated." Oh, I'm undefe- oh. I want. I want to the weekend undefeated. Yeah, and, he goes, and then he sends me a text. He goes, "I think I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I jinxed." He goes, "13 did. seconds." I was like, "I don't know, dude." 13 Patrick seconds. Patrick Mahomes. And he, he texts me back and he's like, "I, I fucked, fucked up. up." I thought Patrick I Mahomes up. was going to do it. though. He was going to pull it off. He and did. Like, you could, yeah. I know. So I'm like, oh, I wish I would have bet on that. You could live bet it at that moment. You could have. Yeah. Go, like if, if, Mott took, if, if Mott took would have texted the group that his boy just said that he won the bet, we all should have loaded yeah. up on KC. Because yeah. right. that's how gambling works yeah. too. Yeah. Like whatever you're like, I'm winning today. And you know what? You would have had I mean, a like lot. The, if you remember, the, the first bet that we made at LaBerge yeah. was I had a basketball game and then I bet Alabama yeah. in the yeah, LSU. Uh, it was um, LSU Alabama. Spread. It was the LSU Alabama, Alabama. It was like game. Points. It was the LSU Alabama game. And there was no way that LSU was going to compete with Alabama. There was no way Alabama was going to beat the brakes off of LSU and Tuscaloosa this year. I'll put a hundred dollars on it. You know what I mean? And you look up in the first quarter and LSU's beating Alabama. And then in the fourth quarter it's still a game. And by the end of it you're like, this is dead. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like gone. the ones that you think guarantee I'm getting Ooh. that. That's free money. Give me the give me give me give me Alabama. Next thing you know, LSU's beating Alabama. Here's yeah, the just deal. gambling yeah. is an Here's evil, the deal. evil After that deal. touchdown, after Buffalo Bills scored that touchdown with 13 seconds, and you bet Kansas City, you would have had the odds. Would've the changed. odds would have changed, and you would have had you would have won a lot of money. <sighs> You're like, hey, I'm gonna bet on Kansas City because I think they're gonna win. Thir- but they're gonna win. Yeah. Nobody thinks they're gonna score and win 13 seconds. They do. It's over. There's nothing worse than the guy that throws around the L word when you're no. gambling, and that it's just there is a hard and fast rule with my like our group text. If you say that, you're out. Like we What's went the to. L word? I don't know. I'm gonna say it. L O C K. 
Oh. Don't even <laughs> okay. fucking talk about it. It's the worst thing you can say before you put a bet in during a game, <laughs> halftime, anytime. Nothing Why? makes me more up because it's a fucking jinx. It is. Get out of here okay. with that. Okay. Always. Oh my god. Well, I'm like, glad easy. you said this. Easy. Easy. That's all right though. Yeah, big it really makes it's a big way. Well, yeah, it's a big weekend for Lloyd. Yeah. Easy. He has three yeah. futures on the same team in the one oh, weekend. So he's mad. Thank you. It's a big. Wow. He bet three future <laughs> bets on the Rams to win the Super Bowl. Three different, three different times. times. Really? And he Damn. didn't know on accident. He forgot. Wow. Check the account history. I just what a review. My gut. We yeah. talked about it on Mike Dub. Go look at it. It's, yeah, it's a uh, we'll step away from this message from Hub International. Hey, Lloyd. Uh-oh. Lloyd. Rams are a lock. Oh, you did. You did. Get out of here. You play the commercial. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Probably all in the chat. Fucking Rams. Oh, oh my bad. God. Enjoy. Enjoy. Watch me burn on the live stream. Whether you're a business or an individual and you partner with Hub International Insurance, you receive a vast network of risk insurance, employee benefits, retirement, and wealth management specialists that bring clarity to a changing world. Hub International Insurance, the official insurance provider for the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Pelicans, and the Jordy Pilata Show. Whether you're a business or an individual and you partner with Hub International Insurance, you receive a vast network of risk insurance, employee benefits, retirement, and wealth management specialists that bring clarity to a changing world. Hub International Insurance, the official insurance provider for the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Pelicans, and the Jordy Pilata Show. Welcome back here to the Jordy Colada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet here on this Friday, every single day. Check out Go, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com, online, or you can check them out in Laplace for brand new cars. Used car lot over there at uh, Go Express Auto Sales on the corner of Sherwood and Florida Boulevard. Nick Richard, Lee Carney, and the entire crew. Give them a shout out from the Jordy Colada Show when you check them out at Go Chevrolet, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com. You mentioned it a little bit, and uh, Mikey is out. Mikey is hitting the road. He's got something down in Lafayette that he's got to get to, and Katie's off to a doctor's appointment, so just Lizzie and I. They just, I didn't even know about either one the of those things. Here, here we on go. this Friday. Feels a little retro on this flight, oh, buddy. Yeah. Uh, roll your windows down. It's all good. Take your seatbelts off. If you're Kick Larry, your feet yeah, up. If you're Larry, give him get in the chat. <laughs> yeah, right. Take your <laughs> shoes off. Uh, you mentioned this a little bit, Tyron Matthew. Mm. Uh, not a fan of the transfer portal. Also gave a little shout out to Sean Payton. Says uh, that he has much respect uh, from afar uh, and uh, always loved playing Payton and, and had nothing but love uh, really for uh, for Sean Payton as he has 
uh, said big shout out to Sean Payton and everything he has done for the city of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana. One of the very best. Uh, hoping that he can still get the keys to the indoor facility so awesome. he can host those football camps. Uh, thanks for always supporting me. Uh, Sean Payton hitting back and said, man, always got you covered. Much respect from afar. One thing has been bugging me. Uh, 504 star uh, was uh, with Sean Payton. Uh, he wants him to hit the gritty. He hadn't seen him gritty yet, so that's what he was trying to, he, you know, incorporate a little New Orleans into sure. the tweet again. He, Sean Payton's pretty savvy on the old He Twitter. is. He is. Um, but Matthew was also uh, voicing his uh, displeasure with the uh, the transfer portal, uh, saying that, uh, I hate the transfer portal. I sat behind Patrick Peterson and Morris Claiborne, and I loved it. Made me hustle harder, work harder, pushed me to greatness. Um, I think... It's not shocking, right? No, not at all. He also played as a freshman uh, behind those two guys. Uh, but this is, when I read this, I thought this is why he's going to be a great head coach. Because I think that he's going to do that. I don't, I'm not necessarily at LSU. I don't know if he's going to be at LSU. I hope it's at LSU. Um, but he's obviously made his mind up that he's getting into coaching. Because I would say because he comments on stuff like this. Yes. Because he's not doing He's this. always in it. Yeah, he's always involved, and he knows what's going on around like college football circles. And I don't think he says something, especially when you talk about the college football stuff, that he doesn't mean. Like, right. He wouldn't put that out into the universe if he didn't absolutely think he wanted to be a coach. And he's talking about having like the indoor facility and running his camps. Like He's obviously invested like in the youth and wants to be a part of this because he knows how much football it did for him. And so like it's kind of his way to give back. It's got a lot of, uh, a lot of Kevin Falk vibes. Yes. Where it's like, look what this game did for me. I'd be a fool not to give back. So I have all this knowledge. Let me impart it and grow the game. And just this guy that is a, um, I mean, like he he's he's the smartest. He's the one. He's 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 the guy that that you go to. He's almost the czar of uh, of football that you can sit down with and have these conversations with, and, and learn so much just by picking his brain. I mean, he's one of these guys that has. Ultimate amount of wisdom. Unlimited IQ for it football. Feels like yes. But for a lot of those, like a lot of those coaches, like Magic Johnson, a lot, when the great step into coaching, there's a fine line between. I don't know how to really explain it. I just do it. Like what Tyron Matthew does on the football field, it's a combination of, like film study and preparation, but then just skill. Like you can't really teach the honey badger, and so that's the only like fallback if Tyron gets into coaching is, how do I verbalize this to people? Like what I mean when I say do this on the football field because. Like, there's other examples other than Magic Johnson of guys that get in and just say, oh, I just do it. Like, do it like this. It's like, Magic, I'm not Magic Johnson. you got to teach me a little bit in a different way. You know, so that would be Tyron Matthews' only real yeah. downfall. But I think he's so committed to it, he'll figure it out. Well, I think what he does best is communication. Right. And I think the hardest part of being a really good coach is being able to communicate with your team. And I think that he'll have that figured out. Um and he cares. He's passionate. You know what I mean? He loves it. He wants it. And um, like we said, I mean, he shared a, a a tweet with us, and it was – This goal's uh, pretty high. Yeah, I mean, he's he, he wants in. Uh, that's what he wants to be. And, and, and like I said, I mean, the fact that he's always kind of invested in commenting on, on what's going on around, um, you know, kind of the headline news of college football uh, shows you that he's very much invested and wants to be a, uh, a part of it. As uh, you know, he's he'll be huge this weekend for KC. I, I know that he's going to. It's not been yet ruled upon whether or not he's going to go. Uh, I'd have to imagine you'd have to. If there's two guarantees, it's that Tyron Matthew would hate the transfer portal and that he's going to play in the AFC Championship. Like, Amen. there's no way you go to who, what team doctor is going to tell Tyron Matthew no. Like, it, if it comes down, I know that like health and safety is a big deal in the NFL, but Tyron Matthew is one of those guys that's just not going to let you keep him off the field. Especially in a game like this. Not for a weekend like this, no. right. And it happened so early. He's had a week off. That's usually like the baseline, right? Seven days seems about right. It happened so early in the game. All of that matters, like as timing goes. I think, and I just would bet, if you could put that as a prop, I'd bet the time Matthew plays. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with they you need that. him. You saw that how Buffalo was able to dice them up without him in the middle of the field. Especially in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really attacked up the seams between the numbers when he was out of the game. I mean, some of those passes Gut Josh them. Allen was making was like tech I mean, it was like video games, he got, man. He got Gabriel Davis a, a contract Whew. just by running up the seam. Got Gabriel Davis known. Speaking of being known, it's Quincy Wiggins, our guy, Big Q mm. from Madison Prep, and the reshuffling of some of these recruiting rankings have come out 
over the last couple of days. And it was interesting to see that our friends over at 247 put together their top 247 list for the class of 2022, the final one. And there was a new number one overall prospect in the, uh, in the state as uh, Quincy Wiggins uh, overtook Will Campbell and Jacoby Matthews for the top spot. Uh, Wiggins, who jumped 22 spots overall Jesus. after his senior season, going from uh, number 70 uh, in the country to number 47 in the country with a rating increase from 94 to 97. He also finished as the number eight defensive lineman in the country. Now, LSU's got some really high-end players in this class of 22. Obviously, Will Campbell. Obviously, uh, Jacoby Matthews. Uh, Walker Howard is on that list. But as we've said a couple of times through this recruiting cycle, when you put premiums and you put futures on prospect, Quincy Wiggins grades higher than just anybody that they have in this class. It's first because of his physical dominance, the way that he uh, has physically just butted into a five-star looking prospect. I mean, six foot four, he's got a huge wingspan. Uh, he weighs 265 pounds. He moves like he weighs 165 pounds. I mean, I, I don't want to bring this to light again, but I mean, that clip of him flying off of that scooter and bouncing back up, it it shows you just, I mean, how Freak durable show. and freaky this guy is. I mean, that had killed a lot of people. Yes, the fact that it didn't, up. I mean, the fact that he is not, it's still in the hospital is a, a enormous blessing, but I mean, the athleticism and the, the toughness to take that shot like he did and pop up, I think gives you an idea of just the type of human being you're dealing with. And then the position, right? I mean, it's such a premium position in football where everybody is looking for the quarterback. You've got to have the left tackle or the, the dominant offensive lineman to protect the quarterback. But the second most, um, the second, the second player on the field that, that you're most intrigued by, that you're most looking for, is the defensive end, is the guy that can get to the backfield and get to the passer. And Wiggins is that dude. He's that guy. And for what he has learned in the last two seasons as a football player, because that's one thing that we have to keep perspective of. I mean, he really is new to the game. He's, he's been primarily a basketball player his entire life. Now, he's got a football player's body, and he's kind of developed into this, this star-studded player, but to see him number one on this list, um, it's, not, it, it's not that shocking, man. I mean, well, it's... Do you think it happened because of the camps? Like, what, what he was yes, able to do in this, I do. I mean, this I think Under Armour All-American game? For, for or, supposedly, I mean, the, 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 the four days he was on the practice field in San Antonio, I mean, yeah. he was one of the guys that people were like, Jesus. I mean, we can't keep our eye. This guy is going to be a wrecker. And um, but I think that's where a lot of this came from. Because if he doesn't practice in the what, San Antonio uh, All-American game, the Army All-American game, um, I don't think this, he gets the ratings bump because, like you said, these people were, like, foaming at the mouth after they saw him. And we kind of knew what Quincy was capable of, but for him to be able to show out like that on a pretty much a national stage for high school was, uh, you know, impressive enough to pass people up that have been number one, number two in the, in the state rankings almost all year. He's going to be a dog. He's going to be a killer. They mentioned the arm. Said, you know, healing fine. Yeah. Uh, Bro, I mean, he's crazy. I mean, that's all he walked away with. It's like with. rubber. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he just like bounced back. He was like plastic, and he just looks at his arms like, oof. Yeah, you could see he him kind of shake it off, even like in his head. He's kind of like, what just happened? He just kind of gets back up and keeps it moving, man. I mean, um, I can't wait to hear about, see some of the battles that him and Will Campbell are about to go into over the next three years. Over under practices before a fight, uh, five, spring, sure. Yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, you see, you see what Will Campbell does. He likes yeah. to get under he people's needles. Skin. You. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He ain't I mean, you, you could even see that one on one that we watched in the indoor that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was getting all up in his With no pads on. Yeah. Like, you know that shit bothers people. Absolutely, he knows what he's doing. But he yeah, they're going to go at doing. each other. Yeah. But by the middle of next year, they'll be brothers. Oh yeah, they'll be like, I mean, as tight as they'll be best friends. And then over the next three years, they'll turn into dominant players on both sides of the ball. I mean, I expect it to be like 
Will Campbell, Quincy Wiggins, and Walker Howard at SEC Media Days in three seasons. And the LSU top ten, top five team in the country with the, all Louisiana guys going to SEC Media Day. I mean, that's the that's the sauce that makes LSU great. That's what they're selling to Jacoby Matthews this weekend. Yeah, come be a part of the squad. Yeah, I mean, like just like and Harold you have Perkins been. a little. I mean, you're from yeah. Louisiana. If you can get if you can get those two, Jacoby and Harold in the boat, that's a massive win for LSU recruiting because right now you. It's been all transfer portal. Like, there's not a lot of recruits that you would say that are left that you'd be like, all right, they have a shot with this guy. And the Harold Perkins flip would be massive. And the Jacoby Matthews, like, him deterring his signing day all the way until the last minute feels like wins already for LSU. But if they could put that hat on, I mean, you have a class that is star-studded with Louisiana talent. And that's what you were worried about with Brian Kelly. But he brought in Uncle Frank. And he got – Uncle Frank did work. I feel like he's got Javante Citizen in the boat, too. Like, that was – that happened very quickly as soon as Frank Wilson got here. Made up a lot of ground with Trevante for sure. He made up a tremendous amount of ground in that one weekend visit that he spent with Trevante. Now, look, he has been doing work on Trevante since the day he got the job. We've always been kind of poking fun and making fun of Wilson taking that picture of that leather jacket, that LSU leather jacket that he had left over from his time a couple of years back because he had stopped there first before he even went back to Baton Rouge. The day that he got the job, he went over and saw Trevante Citizen at, uh, at his high school uh, before he even officially made it over to Baton Rouge and met Brian Kelly. Uh, so uh, they've made up a ton of ground on Citizen, and I will tell you that Cadillac Williams has done a really good job of recruiting Citizen over to Auburn. And it really does look like, um, you know, the relationships mean a ton to Citizen, his family, his dad, his parents, everybody involved. And Williams has done a really nice job of just kind of staying consistent. LSU had a big turnover with Kevin Falk. If Kevin Falk's the running back's coach, Trevante Citizen's in the boat. He's got a really good relationship with him. But if there's somebody that can um, try and repair the relationship and really prove that they are the, the, the right coach and leader for Trevante, uh, it, would, it, it would be Frank Wilson. And Wilson's on the job. So if you're LSU, you got to feel real secure about where you sit, kind of how – they're going to come down the stretch here, uh, closing it up for uh, for LSU as far as some of these players sit. To, you know, the guys that are coming in this weekend, Jacoby Matthews, uh, Harold Perkins. Uh, we mentioned uh, some of the other guys that, that, that were coming in uh, as well. How important is it, do you think, that LSU has the last visit with Harold Perkins? Like, Huge. That, 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 that for him to be like the last bug in your ear is to, for LSU's, and it's his first, first official visit. Every time he's visited LSU, it's been unofficial, so – this will be the first time he gets like the, the the VIP treatment, the luxury red carpet experience, and he'll see what L- like every every gun that LSU can shoot, like it's going to go off. All the fireworks are laid out for Harold Perkins and Jacoby Matthews. Like it's going to be as much as LSU can do. Absolutely, no. This is uh, this is their um, Super Bowl, their best foot forward they have to put this weekend as far as recruiting goes, and they have a chance to do it with two of the best in the state with. Uh, are, are the, the, the two best in this cycle in Perkins uh, and Jacoby Matthews coming down this weekend. Oh, just, do you think that they – a lot of people don't know about what goes into those recruiting trips. Do you think LSU is sewn up on that side with Brian Kelly coming in and establishing his own people or they're scrambling? No, I think that they have a, they've got a method put in place now. I mean, I think that that's what they've probably been working on more than anything was establishing what their procedures were going to be for weekends like this. Right, this because one in particular, they knew that you know. I mean, first things first, you got to get players. First things first, you got to recruit. First things first, you got to sell the message, and you got to be tightened up on that. Um, so this weekend would be a great qualifier for what, what what they're talking about because you know, I mean, this is this is a game changing weekend for LSU. I mean, Absolutely, this, is, this, this, is, say, this could pop. I don't know how much it would pop their class up, but you have two potential starters. I would say coming on campus this weekend talk about former LSU guys how much concern do you have for Burroughs knee because it, it wouldn't be reported if it wasn't probably at least talking about and then when you saw the last time they played KC that's when he came out the game because he couldn't kneel the clock out and they said the injury was to the same knee that he had like the reconstructive surgery on that is reportedly worse than what came out the first go around like it wasn't as um an easy of a transition into like from the surgery to the field as it probably should have been, because I think Joey B attacked the rehab a little hard. I'm not worried about Joey B being Joey B. I'm worried about Joey B being Joey B 
too much of a good thing. Right. Like that, you know, he might push it to a point where he sets himself back even more this offseason. He's playing. No doubt. Oh, no doubt. He's, he's going to play good. He's going to play well. But he gets crushed every week. I mean, they, they sacked him nine, nine times. times last week. Nine times. And, I mean, every game he's out there getting slaughtered, it feels like. Every game there's something missing from his jersey or his uniform or something. Last week he had his sleeve ripped off. The, like two weeks before that, he had his nameplate ripped off. You saw the grass in his helmet all last weekend. Like, he's getting pummeled back there, and a lot of people are making a big deal out of the nine times except for Joe Burrow. He was like, yeah, I mean, that's kind of part of football. And it's like, bro, you shouldn't be getting hit that much, but – it is what it is at this point. And if they, I think the KC defensive line isn't the worst matchup in the world for Cincinnati. Like, when you, if they win this game and go to the Super Bowl, then you get against the Rams. Oof. That's when it might be. Even San Francisco. Yeah, man. set the doomsday clock on Burrow because I don't know what they're going to do. Um, it'll be fun to see Matt House going up against Joe Burrow, the LSU defensive coordinator. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I guess you want, I mean, you kind of have to root for the Bengals in that sense, too. You want Matt House on campus. Get him back here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, quit Bur- zooming and get on. You know, I want to see you in person. Burrow could play. He could play hero again for LSU. Absolutely, this guy. Um, all right, so it'll be interesting to see how the recruiting weekend works out. Remember, daily we're brought to you by Johnson and Spillers. There are dentists over there at JohnsonSpillers dot com. You can find them in uh, Gonzales or in Baton Rouge on Prepara Avenue out in Gonzales or here in Baton Rouge on Perkins Road in between uh, Blue Bonnet and Segan Lane. Get in touch with John Saw and Spillers, our dentist over here at the Jordy Collada Show. We'll be back and close it out with Nathan Velasquez here on this Friday. We come back as uh, the Jordy Collada Show is driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Do you have questions about your finances? Are you looking for recommendations from a skilled financial advisor? Get in touch with our friend Daniel Newman over at Edward Jones. You can find him easily by logging online and shooting him an email at daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. That is daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. Whether it is help with your 401k or just fiscal advice heading into the new season, get in touch with Daniel today. Best way to do it, email him, daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. He's our experienced financial advisor. Let him be yours, daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. Papa Earl's, the fine spice originating right down here in South Louisiana by our guy Mark Pop Norman. Developed it back in 2018 and won Amazon's Newcomer of the Year in 2019. They pride themselves in having 30% less salt and sodium than the leading brands at the same price point. You can find them locally. Look for Papa Earl's at Rouse's, Calandro's, Matherne's, High Neighbor, and more. Gearing up for spring and summer down here in South Louisiana and you want to keep your lawn maintained during these sunny seasons, get in touch with our friend Blake Bear over at Bear's Lawn Maintenance where he says, you grow it, I mow it. 225-485-8022. 225-485-8022 is where you can find Bear's Lawn and Maintenance, the official lawn and maintenance company of the undisclosed location. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Stop and see our friends out there at Go Chevrolet. Every Friday, we talk to Nathan Velasquez, who is the five-minute critic on social media. Make sure you find him there as uh, he is there every single week talking to us, recapping movies, reviewing movies, and also giving us the insight on the latest in Hollywood. Uh, Nathan, good morning. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. There's a freaking blizzard that's oh, on the way right now, so I think we're about to that. get shut in for the weekend. Nate, gross. Um, I know. Do, do you, lose, like, you lose electricity in that? Ooh. 
Yeah, I'm getting a little worried about that. Getting a little yeah. worried about that. It sounds most people that I've talked to they're saying that that probably isn't going to be the biggest problem. That doesn't seem to happen as much as you would think. But I, hey, it still makes me a little nervous. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if we're still around to talk next week. Yes, I, I, I think you'll make it. You should make it. You should make it. Positive thoughts. Nate, has it been 50 years since The Godfather's been produced? This year. This year, it's 50 wow. years. Yeah, they're wow. doing they're doing a re-release. And normally, whenever they do a re-release, they'll do like a very selective. Maybe like they'll put it in the big cities. Uh, I mean, normally with this type of thing, Baton Rouge normally gets whenever they do a big re-release. But they're doing like a full-on nationwide. The Godfather is going wow. to come back to theaters across the entire country for the 50-year release. And it's that's a rare thing. Like it's uh, movies are one of the few art forms actually where it's like if you want to see you know a, a great show like a Broadway play, you know where to go. Obviously, if you want to go and see like the Mona Lisa, you know where to go. And unless you spend thousands of dollars on an awesome movie like in home movie theater, you're not going to be able to experience the great movies uh, unless you know you're lucky enough for them to maybe come around every once in a while. So Godfather coming back is, I mean. It's a pretty big deal. And, yeah, I can't believe it's been 50 years. Wow. And, of course, there's going to be a box set to go sure. along with this one. So Absolutely. spend $150 on that. Uh, Nate, do you remember the first time you saw The Godfather? Or was, that a, was that a movie for you that was an instant classic? Everyone in my family, like every generation, was obsessed with The Godfather. So I can't say I remember. It was that type of thing that was just like we'd always kind of been watching it. It was always kind of on if it came on tv then it was just kind of you end up watching the last half of the movie so i can't say i remember the first time i actually full-on like saw it but it is one of those few movies that the more that you go back to it like i've seen it like definitely over six or seven times now every time you go back to it you always see more stuff in it it's a really it's really layered the performances are incredible like not dated a day from 50 years that's what's so weird about yeah, about it being 50 years old, it doesn't feel like it at all. Is that Marlon Brando's best work? Ooh, man. I, there's, like, the two sides of Marlon Brando. There's, like, the earlier days, wherever he's, you know, he's working in the much more, um, he's working in the much more classical movie sense. And then there's the phase of his life where he started eating a lot of pies. Sure, started being yes. Late right, to right, all right. of his performances. <laughs> right, so in right. terms of, like, the latter one, I would say it's got to be between uh, the second part of his career has got to be between apocalypse now and the godfather and it's got to be the godfather like it, it's it's the most epochal one of those epochal performances of all time it's kind of like up there with uh you know with anthony hopkins in silence of the lamps right. not on screen a ton for a movie that's three and a half hours right but it is one of the most memorable performances of all time it's incredible uh fight club is one of the great movies uh over the last 25 years that has been produced. I saw where China uh, changed the ending of Fight Club like radically. What, what, so, what did you make of this story? So it it actually never got a full blown like proper release in China because they're very strict about what they allow to be imported to show everyone. So they went ahead and released it like just in the last month. On China has their own kind of version of Netflix, so they put it on there. And they changed the ending radically. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen Fight Club, but essentially the way that the movie does play out, they cut the movie like five minutes before the ending, and then they just throw up a subtitle that says <laughs> the police showed up and everyone was arrested, and that's the end of the movie. And it's, it's the weirdest thing. Well, first of all, it, most people who were reporting on it from like the Hollywood outlets were like, well, it's a good compromise because it's essentially 99.9% .9 the same movie. I was shocked that that's how they were talking about it because it's not, that's not the same movie even in the slightest. It's a little, it's a little worrying because China, I mean, this is them kind of censoring material that comes into their own country, but they've got a stronghold on the types of things that are even released here because obviously their market is huge. So if they say change this character in a Marvel movie, they'll change it if they say, uh, totally CGI out, like, the emblem of America. China's flag. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. So this one doesn't really affect American audiences at all. If, if anything, it's a little funny that this happened. But still, the level of influence that China has over most media, it's a little worrisome. And this is just kind of like a little taste into how it can radically shift a story. Is Fight Club not on the list of movies you can spoil if you haven't seen it by now? 
I mean, you really have no interest in seeing Fight Club because I have the picture of what they put on the screen. I was going to flash it up for the the viewers. Is that is that not apropos? I would have said the exact same thing. I would have said the exact same thing. And I was talking with just one time when I was visiting the family. We were talking about Fight Club. I mentioned the ending. And then I've got my 11-year-old brother there who goes, oh, wow, I can't watch Fight Club for another five years. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> exactly. So that's the thing. I feel like if you're in the what right What a young setting, little like smart-ass Velasquez yeah, on yeah, the I way. I wonder who raised him. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you got to – you got to watch out because you never you never know, especially if there's, if there's I guess, may, maybe younger people around. I feel like if you've got someone like your own age and they haven't seen Fico, it's like, dude, what's going on here? What's going on? Uh, Nate, is there controversy around James Bond right now? Am I reading this? Is there a lawsuit in place? Well, it's not around. It's around one of the actors that was in the latest James Bond movie. If you saw the, uh, the latest one, No Time to Die, there's an actress in it in the Cuba sequence called Ana de Armas. She's in Knives Out as well. Uh, again, this one was just a pretty – I'm kind of just wondering how this type of story ever plays out because it's very rare. So back, like maybe like three years ago, there was a movie came out called Yesterday, kind of a musical comedy centering around the Beatles. And in the trailer, she's in, she's in the trailer for a second. And so um, these two guys recently, they kind of rented the movie, spent like four bucks renting the movie on Amazon. And then the movie, they realized that she wasn't in the movie. They cut her out of the thing. So these two guys – have put a lawsuit through. They are suing Universal Studios for five million dollars in damages, saying that they rent they sent four dollars to see this one actress in this movie, and then she wasn't there. So they're seeking this rarely this rarely ever happens. But it's like who in the world who does this type of thing? Like are these are these like rich punks that just kind of have the time and money to put something like this through? I just thought, I thought it was a fascinating story. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, what are we reviewing this week? This week, we've got Don't Look Up. That's the review that came out this just like the last few days ago. And essentially, the way that I feel about this, and I talked to a few people on this show, people that, that really enjoyed it, and I went back and watched it. And it is funny. It's a lot funnier than I thought it was on the first time that I Thank saw it. Hill, very funny. Leonardo DiCaprio, really good as uh, like an introverted character that's not something that he normally does, but he still pulls off a large range with it. And he's very funny doing it, too. Uh, really stellar cast for me there's just a certain level with it where it's like i'm on board with the message of the sermon but to a degree two and a half hours of preaching it can't that it hinders it it really hinders it and so i would say there's good and there's bad but a little heavy-handed every now and then and in the next few days we're going to do a review of nightmare alley which is totally different direction horror noir movie it's actually still in theater so if you haven't seen that Really check it out. That's a fantastic movie. Don't you think Leo was channeling like his actual aggravation about the – what is he mad about? The trees, the world. He's just mad about the world ending because of uh, uh, climate change. Don't you think it's like that was – that character was deeply rooted in his beliefs in climate change and everything like that? It's, I mean, yeah, it felt like that throughout the whole thing. He's made a few documentaries about that. I, could, I feel like you can really tell in some of the speeches that he gives that it's kind of like, all right, Leo, just – Cool we'll out. give you 45 minutes. Do what you got to do. <laughs> Get it off your chest. Uh, everything good with Baldwin this week? Anything pop up? Uh, what did No, there was, a, there was a little change in the story. So there was a lawsuit that had been put against him right at the start of all this. The script supervisor essentially uh, accused him and like three other people of criminal negligence. So right now, Baldwin and two other people charged in that lawsuit are trying to get it thrown out by saying... She's saying that it is uh, negligence, and if it's negligence, then that means that the state would have to pay her money, not us. So technically, she's you know wrong in that. I I don't know if that, how much that's going to play out. Most of what I'm seeing people say online, it's probably going to stick, probably going to go through. Nothing huge has happened, but still, just uh, I mean, the guy's finally shut up, so yeah. he's probably listen to his lawyers for once. Nate, stay warm this weekend, buddy. Good luck with everything. Uh, we'll be checking gonna, in. Are you going to order the Batman pizza while you're uh, just slumming it at the house? What is that thing? I have no idea. A calzone, like, baked into the pizza in the shape of a bat? doesn't even look, look like a football. I mean, that's a lot of Arthur having to go with, though. I mean, that's a tough undertaking. Is this like a hurricane party? Are you, like, loading up on groceries and essentials right now? Or are you, you you're getting set for kind of hunkering down uh, for loading, the weekend? 
loading up on groceries, going to load up on a little bit of a uh, little bit of liquor, and we're probably going to dive into the Lord of the Rings extended edition. Probably okay. going to make that what we do this weekend. Okay, no football. All right, uh, AFC NFC Championship Super Bowl is on the line. Uh, God, do you know that Joey Burrow is still alive as far as playing and is, is is to go to the Super Bowl? I've heard that he's probably going to make it to the Super. Bowl. I'll watch the Super Bowl. How's that, Lloyd? <laughs> I'll go. watch the Super Bowl. Uh, Nate, you should definitely do like a review of like Super Bowl commercials or something within that game. That would probably the production value that goes into that stuff. The, the people work a freaking year on those commercials. Like, no, you're you're totally right. That stuff is insane. The stuff they go through to make those. Where is the budget on commercials for the Super Bowl as opposed to like a an episode of a show or like a small like a a short movie? They'd pay more money. Like an episode of Game of Thrones, I think that was around like maybe it was a few million for an episode of Game of Thrones. They will go far and above that for a commercial. Like the one where I forget how much it was something over $10 million to make that big Lebowski commercial that they did for, I think it was tequila just to get Jeff Bridges in there and uh, to get rights to the song and everything. They, those get expensive fast. The dude. It, the dude. Is there a conversation where that they say, I don't think anybody can hear these commercials because a lot of it is Super Bowl watch parties to where you just get eyes on it, but you can't hear it. At least in my, my like what's happened in my life when I go to like a Super Bowl party, it's a lot of chitter chatter going on around especially if your team isn't in it. So people aren't necessarily listening to the commercials. They're just judging it off the visuals. I, I think it's more, I think it's more being part of the conversation. Like, yeah, if everyone is drunk and yelling and screaming, but you know, maybe a few people have catch it. Oh, that was Mercedes just then. They're like, well, Mercedes is still Mercedes. Like if they, if you see that logo, that's, I think that's what they're paying for. Have a good weekend, buddy. Y'all too. All right, man. There he is, Nathan Velasquez, the five-minute critic, checking in from New York this morning as they are waiting a blizzard up there in the Northeast. Good luck, Nate. Good lord. Is this his first one, you think? First Sounded blizzard? like it. Yeah. Sounded like he it. didn't really know what to do. He just said, no. groceries, booze. Ah, dude, that was not be. I would not be good in a blizzard. No, you can't get cooped in. No way. There's no ride around. There's no drive. There's no go for a walk. Mm. Walk the dog. Can't get out. Got a hot box of the house. Good lord, <laughs> Smoking cigs man. inside. Windows up. Windows down. Doors closed. <laughs> That's when you'll find out who the real addicts are. The no cigarette doubt. smoker, it will do you anything. You can't keep them trapped. No. Can't keep them trapped. Don't burn a hole in the window. Look, I got <laughs> just right <Yeah>. here. <laughs> got a crack. <laughs> who opened the door? One second. <laughs> just sitting on the balcony freezing to death. I gotta have it. Rolling the window down in traffic. Jeez, and like dude. Even in Louisiana, when yeah. it's like, dude, it is fucking freezing outside. No it's doubt like, about don't, it. Just give me 30 seconds. I'll suck this thing down. It's the like, worst is being a passenger in that Yeah, like, I don't want anything to do like, with this. Dude, I'm, not only do I get the secondary smoke, I get the secondhand dude. smell. The cold. Yeah, the, 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 the cold air. Fucking cigarette smoke. There's, and, there, well, there's a, and then there's like the respectful cigarette smoker goes, can I smoke in here? And you're like, yeah. no, but it seems like. And you, Just because you asked, you can. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. My car is toast. So you can do whatever. You put it out on the Absolutely. put it out on the seat. Yeah, that's fine. And light it off the engine. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man, it did smell. It had a little smell to it when I walked by today. So I don't know what that is. You should use the old school method of just leaving the keys in the ignition and they're in there right now. Yeah. They're in there right okay. now. Good. Just call insurance. Is that how that works? Yeah. I don't know what happened. I don't know. We'll cut this part. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Seems like you were talking on the radio that you uh, want somebody to come steal your car. Uh, no, no, that wasn't mine. Uh, big weekend plans. We got watch party tomorrow morning. We got watch party on Sunday, AFC NFC championship game. We got a lot of things happening over here at the noodle this weekend. And I think this will be your first like glimpse into, I know we've been putting like spreads on the ticker, but this will be the first time you probably have other people invested as well. Cause the mobile aspect is a lot less intimidating. Nobody wants to go into a sports book because yeah. that's the seediest See, place yeah, on right. earth. But if you can get, just do it on your phone, ah, it makes it so much easier to do it from your couch. Put a couple bets in, see the lines. You know, you'll dabble, especially with the free play out there. What's so. the comp on being seen at the sports book? Is that the massage parlor? I was going to say, like, the porn store. Yeah. Like, it, it has that feeling. of it If does, people like, know, ooh, like, oh, he's, he's here again. He's it's like, greasy. What? Yeah. Golly, he's grimy. Unless you're a winner. Yeah. But the people that are in there, like, actively, and you see, like, if you have a sports book group, right, call help. Sure. You know, like, yeah. I don't know if people go to the porn store anymore, but that place is probably pretty seedy. Sure. Especially yeah. they have like the. Do you remember where you could like go into the back and like rent and watch your movie? Oh, Ugh. God and you, Lord. I guess the the, the, the floors, watch box, the, the floors in that place. Can't pick your feet up. Yeah, sticky. <laughs> I'm sure. 
the basketball floor. <laughs> yeah. Like they're Don't squ- worry about good squeaking. shoes. Yeah. yeah, right. Going barefoot, slip and fall. Uh, all right. Have a uh, have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Make sure to hit that like share button. We appreciate you being here, man. Thank you for starting your week, being with us this week, and ending your week with us here on the Jordy Colada Show. Stop in and see him over at Go Chevrolet and tell him you heard it here as they power us through the week. JordyColadaShow dot com, YouTube, Facebook. We'll be up. Jamar Chase over under yards. What do you think it is? Uh, one twenty. No, for the game. One twenty. Cooper Cups is one hundred five. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and wait, he did go for like two thirty last game against the Chiefs. Ninety five. Eighty five and a half. Over. Over. Sean put in a little parlay. He just sent it to me. First parlay I've seen from the from the app. He's got Rams money line, Bengals money line, Jamar Chase over in yards, ten to win ninety three. It's a good little, that's a good little taster, a little, little duster. Over 85 and a half feels good. It does. It feels good. If they, well, yeah, if you got Bengals money line, you'd expect Jamar Chase to go over 85 Absolutely. and a half to keep him in the game. Because they don't have anybody they can cover him. And that may be three catches for him. It could be one. Could be. He almost scored on that. That screen? Little slip screen. I don't know. Well, they were just in the way. I, it was, it was. Um, Boyd? Higgins, Higgins was in the way. Yeah, Higgins. Get, just let the other man just go. move out of the get, way. Yeah, right? I'm playing against 22 right now. Let him work. Fulton Fulton came in from the back. Fulton's oh, a player. He was. He, then they, he, they got up jawing at each other. Yeah. And they were like, same high school, dude. Yeah, Just right? like, look at us. I mean, they've been look going at each other. Me and for, you? Yeah, right. It's <laughs> middle school, thought. dude. Uh, not less miles. No, they would, both would have been the same couple backfield. of DBs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Have a great weekend. Have a great Friday. We'll be back with you Monday morning. Get your bets in. Come watch the watch party. We'll be gambling. You see that picture? Oh, that picture of Joey B. I gotta get to the gym. Oh, you feeling frumpy? Uh, just feel weak. Like the ab feeling when you're like, you can feel it, and you're like, oh, I haven't worked it out in forever. If it's like, this is making me tremble, that's the one that I hate. Tough feeling.